Yeah. Alright, Khan, you can say it now. Stop bitches and bros and non-binary hoes! Uh, yeah, we're live, alright. <laughs> uh, time, time for the thing. Hello. Uh, even if not everybody is in here yet, I'm hoping that we'll get some people to eventually. Hi! This is the, this is the Umineko reading. Um... So general rules, I'm actually gonna make some, make some changes to the server right now. <laughs> um, cause I've, I've caught some people doing some things uh, during the Higurashi reading that are not indicative of somebody paying ah. attention to what's going on. Stay the fuck out of Horny while we're reading visual novels, yep. you fucks. Uh, as of right now, I have locked out Horny I mean, until the end of the Brock reading. You should stay off of your games on stream, on Steam, dogs. I would, I would very much appreciate it if you guys uh, paid as much attention as you possibly could to what's going on. Uh, obviously, this is a murder mystery. Obviously, not all of you are reading, but I would very much appreciate it if you could. At any rate, uh, I'm going to find the, I'm gonna find the music and I'm gonna get my perfectly legal copy. It is perfectly legal because I do own uh, I do own Umineko, uh, copy of the uh, Umineko project because I like having that. So I will be um what was it? <laughs> I will be doing a little fun thing. Is that Orange? We can all say this is a murder mystery. This is a murder mystery. Um, now, for everyone that does specifically not know, so if you know, please do not add into this. I would like to hear everyone that does not knows, uh, does not know their thought of who's gonna die first. <laughs> who's gonna Whoa. die first? Who the characters <laughs> are. Yeah, yeah, out. we haven't really gotten to the actual characters. Fair enough. Yet, so. I will wait at a good point to ask that. Uh, but anyway, Might okay. here. Gun let me let, let me load, let me load the shit up. We can ask that after this this particular stream is over, Joshi. I think. I think that's if what I would no make the most dies, sense. But... Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Also, never forget this game contains scenes. <laughs> this this will contain scenes. Fuck. This, this contains so many fucking scenes. What do you mean? Hold up, hold up, hold up. What do you mean by scenes? scenes. You'll know when you get there. You, you will get there when we get there. It's a so joke like, on like a warning where it says like this thing contains scenes that may not be suitable. It's just this. Thing contains uh, scenes. We live in a society. Uh, that being Real said, wow, uh, Umineko is so jank that it's not getting caught up. It's not getting caught by the game capture. <laughs> Give me a uh, second. I'm gonna pull it up real quick. Uh, Umineko, no, no, no. no. Specific window, pawn scripter. Oh wow, we really the not capturing it. Uh, I so would, I, uh... uh frame rate. Like work? No. For people who are in the stream chat, I would, uh, recommend, uh, fucking pausing the stream in case, uh, uh, an uh, image shows up that may be a spoiler. Uh, I'm trying my fucking heart. Why is this not loading? What the fuck? <coughs> We're ah. it. Wait, it's black. The screen is black. I know, I'm trying to do that right now. Uh, all right, here. Fuck it. Uh, display capture stream. <laughs> you're gonna be seeing my fucking. You're gonna be seeing my shit. Uh, that's Even all. all the porn on your desktop? No, there no, is no porn. Oh. No. No. All right, there we go. No. Yo, we're live. Get that shit on the fucking Discord. I, sh I sure am. Just give me a fucking second. The only One. Two. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, there we go. Alright, well, there we go. Let's um, dive the in. Rondo of Witch and Reasoning is here. <laughs> oh, okay, Northwest Washington. Big right. fiction. Uh, hey, if you want. Hey, I mean, if you want to get in the Discord. Uh, Test one, one, two, three, one, two, I, three. Uh, I would appreciate it if you hit that funny little follow button because that's all, it's nice to have more people on the channel. Two, there's literally a button you can enter if you go into the About section and hit the thing that lets you go into the Discord. <laughs> That being said, uh, uh, the golden okay. the golden theater now has twelve people in it. That feels like a little too much, so we're not going to be going any further than that right now. Okay, so uh, <laughs> official introductions. Hi, uh, welcome. Uh, holy fuck! I just realized I actually need to like I need to pull up the chart real quick. Uh, man, I'm gonna be fucking finicky about this. Oh my god! It's green saver. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of them. Uh, let's see. Rolls. Alright. So. Top of the list. Hi. Uh, I'm Orange. I'm the proprietor of this establishment. I'm also, uh, uh the voice of Battler, Goda, 
Kinzo and the general narrator, uh, Khan, if you want to say your name, uh, and I would I would lead it with I voice a lot of the female characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> oh, there we go. I'm gonna... I'm gonna go Ryugamine. I am the only girl here, so I feel a little uh, outclassed. I oh, oh, not outclassed. What's the word I'm looking for? A number. There we go. <laughs> It's definitely not outclassed. <laughs> oh yeah, you're probably you were one of the best PAs here. <laughs> you steal the show. Mm -hmm. Oh come yeah, on, please do. keep my ego on the ground where it belongs, okay? Seriously, Slip keep my ego on the ground where it belongs. Like <laughs> Other than that, oh, I'm afraid of heights. Other than that, uh, AC, AC, if you would like. Yeah. Oh, uh, hi, I'm uh, a citizen. I was the voice of Okanogi and Kumagai for like the longest time, and now I've been waiting for this for. A, months and this feels almost like dreamlike to be at this menu right now with everybody tonight it feels as if the gods have granted my wish that almost seems too good staring into the menu of umineko nakoroni randu of witch and reasoning it just feels surreal that being said i hope the folks at home enjoy this as much as i will can i buy some pot from you He's also the voice of George. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Joshi, who will be doing voice work for the first time. Yes, hello, I am Joshi. I will be doing voice work for the first time. I did do it, but not on stream. Um, uh, I am I, I am two in similar ranks of AC and Orange. I have read this before, and I am excited, and I am happy that we are going to get to this point and read Umineko. I will be your humble voice of Canon the Servant, as well as... Genji, <laughs> the servants as well. And then uh, Noir is uh, the voice of Rudolph and Krauss. Noir, you want to say some stuff? He's not here. Noir isn't here. Oh, I think he uh, popped out. Oh, here? I think he popped out a second. I uh, don't know what happened. Wait, was he here before? He was here before, right? He was. Yes. He was. He popped in, then yeah, he, he popped out. <laughs> Noir, you are needed. <laughs> <laughs> is he oh, like, just keep uh, going, just keep going. We'll Alright, in, in the meantime, right. in the meantime, uh, Bone, you can go. Uh, hello, I'm Bone Bard. I am excited to finally be a main, uh, I, a main side character, where I will be playing Hideyoshi and Nanjo, old man and apparently male, and apparently male wife, I believe the term. Uh, Nor is resetting, reloading now. Okay. All right. And, uh, I believe I, uh, yep, I'm excited. Uh, next person. Other than that, uh, uh unfortunately we're gonna be waiting for Norwich to smidgen. He's already read it, so it's not too bad if we start without him. Uh, but we aren't gonna, we aren't gonna uh, try and do that. I hope he's not gonna take too long. What and, about Shelly? You forgot yeah, to introduce Shelly. Shelly. Yeah, no, I know, I was gonna, I was gonna leading up to that. Yes, Shelly, go ahead. Hello, I am Shelly. Um, I have no idea who these characters are. I have no idea what happens, and I am excited as f Fuck. I am going to be playing the voice of Kumasawa, who is apparently an old woman, which yes. I will do my best granny voice and try my best. Perfect. Uh... <laughs> Easiest way for that, Shelly? Just channel B. Arthur. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in terms of anything else, uh, unfortunately, I, I'm not going to be able to ignore right now, uh, but hopefully... It looks like his internet has been causing some trouble. Well, fortunately, uh, his characters are not going to be showing up for really, really fast. So, yeah. uh, hopefully... Oh, somebody, oh there <gasps> he is! Yeah. He made it! Noor, yeah. introduce yourself. <laughs> introduce yourself. Oh. Noir. Oh, no. Noir. The real uh, king. Here. Uh, Noir is the voice of Rudolph and Krauss. You want to say something? <laughs> yeah, I'm a... I have just recently finished everything available that I could find associated with Umineko. So I am now the keeper of all great knowledge, and I look forward to this. This is going to be some crazy fun, and it's going to get messy. All right. So, yeah, uh, before we begin, I do see some other new faces in the audience. Number one, thank you all very much for joining. If you want to be in, mm -hmm. this, in this with us for the long haul, I highly suggest you follow us, because that'd be really cool. We're going to be doing other uh, When They Cry stuff and other uh, Ryukashi mm -hmm. shit after this. 
The next one up is also, the next one up is Sakonia, and unfortunately, hey, we can't do all of Sakonia on stream. So if you want to see the whole thing, you have to fucking join the Discord. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah. All right. Also, no more. Uh, no set more. some ground rules for the the chat. If you know what's happening in the, the t Twitch chat, we'd like you to um, refrain from posting spoilers or bringing up any certain names. Yes. Um, particularly because we do have people in the audience uh, currently here that have, again, like we said, have not experienced it, and. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. They if might you, look in chat and see a hardcore spoiler. Like, so if going you do post a spoiler, we will we will delete it, but uh, uh, and tell you that hey, right. maybe wait until the characters actually. No spoilers, so, you bastards! Yeah, basically. All right, so no more beating around the bush. No more bullshit. We're fucking like 15 minutes behind schedule. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it live. We are doing it, gonna do it live. All right. So with all that being said, it's time to start. <laughs> Uh, episode 1, Legend of the Golden Witch. Welcome to Rakenjima. The Golden Witch extends you her heartfelt greetings. Before anything else, please make yourself at home. There is nothing to think too deeply about. Just be silent and take in the events, in their entirety, as they unfold. That is all that is asked of you. The difficulty level is standard. Let us at least begin on the on the trodden road. Ooh, the door's out. Go. Here we go. I thought that was like an old timey like film reel. Huh? Nope. This story is undoubtedly nothing more than fantasy. It cannot possibly have any relations to real persons, organizations, places, or events. Oh, you've, you've been indulging in alcohol again, haven't you? The old physician let out a sigh as he removed his stethoscope. Two elderly men could be seen in the dimly lit study, which is filled with dust and a sickly, sweet stench. In the corner of this room, which was much larger than what most people would call a study, there was an expensive-looking bed, a man undergoing a medical examination, and the physician conducting it. There also what appeared to be a servant watching over the whole scene. The bottle is my friend. He has no less a friend than you. He has stood by my side even longer than you have. The man who had bared his chest for the stethoscope spoke un un unapologetically as he straightened out his clothes. Pinzo, son. Your body has only appears to me well thanks to the effect of the medicine. However, if you continue to drink such strong spirits, the treatment will become meaningless. Trust my judgment. Temper your drink. I thank you. Only for the sentiment, my friend. Genji, another glass. Water it down slightly. That way Nanjo can save face. Are you quite sure? After all, both the master who demanded the alcohol and the doctor who forbade it, Genji, the old butler, silently gave a slight nod and carried out his matters of master's orders faithfully. Nanjo, the man's personal doctor, let a deep sigh once again as he watched the butlers busy, busy himself alongside the liquor cabinet. There was a smell filling up the room. The sweet, poisonous aroma felt as though it melted the heart, if not the soul itself. It was the smell of that venomous green drink that the man couldn't bring himself to part from. Nanjo, you are my close friend of many years. I am deeply, deeply grateful for all that you have done to keep me alive this long. I've done nothing. After all, you never listened to my advice as your physician. <laughs> and you never listen when I warn you about a mistaken chess move you're about to make. It seems we are even. My lord. Thank you. I wouldn't die if I ran out of your medicine, but I would if I ran out of this. With one eye on Nanja, who is in had his face set in a resigned expression, Kinzo took the glass that Genji was holding out and out to him. There are probably very few people who would associate the venomous color which filled the glass with an alcoholic beverage. Nanjo, be honest with me. How much time do I have left? Well, no. How short must I make it to get you to stop drinking? Nanjo once again let a sigh out of resignation. As he watched Kinzo down the glass regardless, he spoke. 
We don't have much time. What precisely do you mean by that? Let us illustrate it with a chess game here. You are closing out the game quite well, but I do not ultimately see you quartering my king. Nanjo's gaze was directed as, as a side table with a close with a stately chess set placed on top of it. Judging by the positioning of the pieces, the match was well into the endgame. The Black Rook and Bishop were cutting deeply into the enemy's lines. The White King had already been castled and cornered. Even the amateur, amateur could see that the match would reach its conclusion before too long. Every time Nanjo came to give a, came to give a medical examination, both of them would make a few moves. Nanjo was stating, stating with confidence that Kinzo would most likely fall into his eternal sleep before the game could be concluded. There were less, these were less the words of a physician than they were the words of an old friend. Were you a normal patient, I would recommend that you write a will at this point. And what is a will, Nanjo? Handwritten instructions to the vultures on how to devour and scatter my corpse. No, not at all. As the word suggests, it is a way for you to record your will for later generations. It is far more than just a means to divide up your inheritance. Oh, and apart from the division of the inheritance, what might I write of? Oh, there's your regrets, and matters you have left unfinished. Things you want to pay past down, and things you want to do. Anything you want. Hmm. Things I want to be passed out and things I will I want to tell? Ridiculous. I, Yoshimi Akinzo, have not one thing I want to tell or leave behind. I was born with nothing. I will die with nothing. There is nothing I wish to leave to my foolish children. Even if the end were to come today. Even if it were to come right now. I shall accept this fate of death without a trace of fear! Kinjo's Kinzo son. I created everything. My fortune! My prestige! Everything! Those were built up by me, and they'll be lost along with me. There is nothing I wish to leave behind! Nothing! After I'm gone, I care not if it all goes to waste. I desire no tomb, nor coffin! Those are the terms of the contract I made with the witch. When I die, everything will be lost. That has been the part of the promise such as since the beginning. And that's why nothing will be left behind. There is nothing I can leave behind! After reaching a furious crescendo, Kinzo suddenly slumped over. His expression was limp and feeble, as though an evil spirit had possessed him and then left. However, I do have one regret. I have nothing to leave behind, but there is one thing I cannot leave undone. You would do well to write it down. But of course, it would be best if you could finish it before your time comes. However, even if the worst happens, those who come, no, excuse me. those who come after you will carry it to completion. You must leave behind your regrets so that they can be resolved, even if you are unable to do so yourself. That is the purpose of a way. When Nando tried to put gently pat Kinzo's shoulder, the dying man flew into a sudden rage and batted away Nando's hand. That is no good, no good, no good! As in, while I still live, at the moment of my death, my soul will be devoured by the demons of the contract and wiped out of existence. For me, there'll be no peace or another world after death. That is why everything must be done before I go. That is why will has no meaning for me. And if I had the time to write such a thing, if I had such time to spare, I want to see it. I want to see it one more time. I want to see Beatrice's smiling face one last time. Oh, Beatrice, why do you resist me so? I would run everything you have, given my right this very moment. I'm prepared to lose everything. So please, show me your smile just one more time. Beatrice, I beg of you. You must be able to hear this final plea. That is the kind of woman you are. I beg of you, 
Show yourself to me! You're here, aren't you? You're standing there invisible, listening to every word I say. And even now you're mocking me from somewhere in this room, aren't you? Please appear before me one more time and smile! Feel free to scold me, even snatch away my life before your, by your very hands if you wish. I don't want to die alone like this! I can let, let myself die until I've seen your smile just one more time! Ah, Beatrice! Beatrice! I offer up this life of mine! I offer it up to you! I'm begging you! Beatrice! And title. No, no, this is the one that doesn't have spoilers. I fucking modded it so it doesn't have spoilers. Like a dollar and a By the way, that's a real fight. Not shocked by that, honestly. This is a spoiler free version of it. <laughs> yes, it's spoiler free. <laughs> Welcome to Rokenji. Let's fucking go! Yeah! Oh, I don't even. Yo! Island. Welcome to Rokenjima. Hope you oh, man, that <laughs> Kinzo you. fucking also, gutted. Uh, Kinzo gutted the first day, October 4th, 1984. And 86. Kinzo fucking gutted my throat. <laughs> <laughs> I can. Uh, Door of How was Nanjo? Oh, I told you the name of the track up All at right, the top hey. left. Whoa. Things should move with the times. I can't believe I'll already be able to make the trip in just 20 minutes. I couldn't help but scratch my head and marvel at how far things had come in recent years. I used to go by boat. Back then, we were all forced to endure nearly half a day of swaying back and forth over the sea before we reached Nijima. Things have gotten so much more convenient these days. Still, I've never been on a plane this small. I've flown on a huge jumbo jet before. This is my first experience with such a tiny one. It's gonna shake, isn't it? Say the smaller boats shake more. I guess the same rule probably applies to planes. Ah, uh, just spare me. <laughs> Don't worry, Battle. Huh? It'll shake much less than that boat did. Yeah! Is that you, George Anarchy? <laughs> yeah, don't scare me like that. You just shaved three years off my life. Anyway, what's shaking got to do with anything? <laughs> you don't think I'm actually scared of that plane shaking or maybe falling out of the sky or something, right? Oh, of course not. My mistake. I'm sure that you've changed a lot since we last saw you. After all, it's been six years since then. You're not a kid anymore. <laughs> Sheesh, and here you are, holding to smoke and drink. I've got no interest in smoking, but I've always wanted to try some booze. <laughs> well, if you've got your dad's genes, maybe you can hold that and hold your own when it comes to drinking, right? Well, I usually drink for business rather than pleasure. It's pretty hard to do business in Japan without it. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. So I was thinking I'd take my first shot at tonight's dinner. Uh, that's no good. Battler Cotton, you're still a minor. That drinking alcohol is known to stunt the growth of minors and... Um... Never mind. Come on, I'm tall enough already! It may be easier to find clothes if I shrunk a little. I puffed my chest out proudly. I like my growth spurt, my height was, was below average in my class. Then I grew and grew, and before I knew it, I was over 180 centimeters tall. I guess I have all that muscle training and those, sh those shady mail-order performance-enhancing drugs to thank for that. 
Before then, I'd never dreamed I'd shoot 10 centimeters above George Anarchy. We reached his peak height early on. Damn. I bet all my relatives all say, Look how big you've grown, Battler Chan. Something. That kind of thing is really embarrassing, so I hope they cut me a break. Anyway, my name is Battler. Well, it's pretty damned weird, don't you think? I've got to wonder why my parents were thinking when they gave me that name. I never met anyone who could read it right the first time. I usually get called Sentoku. Too bad. Swing and a miss. My name is written like that. Can you read it? The first part, oh. of, my, the first part of my family's name, Mashiro Mia. That's a fairly plausible. That's a fairly plausible Japanese pronunciation so far. The problem is my own name. That is made up of the characters for fight and person, so it's pronounced Battler. Put it all together, and you get Mashiro Mia Battler. Pretty crazy, right? It's crazy enough my parents decided to call me that. It's even more crazy that some government worker let them make it official. Both groups on the top of my, on my must kill list. Anyway, this is one of my cousins. His name is written like that. Pronounced to Shirmia George. He's five years older than me, so he probably turns 23 this year. Since the Shirmia cousins contest of two boys and three girls, I ended up playing with George all the time. And because I've always thought of him as a big brother, I still call him Anarchy today. Oh. Whoa, Batlock-kun! You look- look how big you've gotten! You know what they say, leave a boy for three days and you'll hardly recognize him. <coughs> that... It must uh. be in his blood, I suppose. Rudolph wasn't that tall either until about his high school years. Perhaps people in a taller if their growth spurt comes late. Okay, sorry, I have to say it. MILF ALERT! <laughs> Fucking hell. Nah, it's oh, nothing gosh. special. Also, yes, I hate Witch Hunt too. it's great. <laughs> yeah, her booba is pretty good. By the way, she's she's voiced by Takano. Just straight up. Yeah, like, so Connor, the voices? voice you chose was actually perfect. <laughs> nah, it's nothing special. Panic. Her real name is to be tough on the inside, too. Exactly. Battler Gun knows how it works. Real men fight or lose based on what they've got on the inside. Can't even forget to keep up your training and discipline. You do that, wait very alertly for the perfect moment, and strike! Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was me. Now, even <laughs> if I never imagined that I'd become the company president I am today, master of my own domain, Yep, to think I've come this far after starting out penny penniless and ruined. This portly and slightly chubby man is George Anaki's dad, Uncle Hideyoshi. He's the husband of Dad's older sister. In other words, we're not blood related. He's nice to children, sociable all the time, even quick to give out some spending money to us kids. Simply put, he's an awesome uncle. He speaks in an odd and very noticeable Kansai style dialect, seemingly of his old own creation. He's actually a natural-born Kanto man. So that mean you have to give him like a hick accent? Yeah, that's it, why we it do southern. Yeah. It, it, it's it's like Japanese. Or New Yorker or whatever. It's the place where comedians yep. come from. Yeah. I, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Apparently, leaving an impression on his everything in the business world. Speaking in different styles than other people is an act that makes him stick out more. However, I hear that he gets embarrassed when he t when talking with an earshot of a real Kansai person. He switches back to standard Japanese. I don't really get it, but he's definitely an interesting person. If oh, only you weren't so quick to brag about your love story. That's enough for now, I think. But your battle is getting tired of it. Aren't you? Nope, not at all. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I think it's pretty cool for a man to have some stories he can brag about. I don't have anything like that at all. Oh, really? I'd imagine a man with your looks would leave girls crying left and right, so I have trouble believing that you have nothing at all to brag about. No, 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 no. <laughs> You're joking, right? Of course nothing weird like that's ever happened to me. In fact, if you know anyone, I'm all ears. Oh, I'm sure you do have some stories. <laughs> Must tell your aunt all about it later. 
after all, she never comes to see the same thing as a thorn. <laughs> this is my aunt and George Anarchy's mother, Auntie Ava. Ayum. She's my dad's older sister. She's Uncle. Hi she's a she and Uncle Hideyoshi are a pair of jokers. Always tease me back and f back as far as I can remember. Some has made them a bit hard to get along with when I was small. That said, I'm currently in the process of discovering that they are still hard to get along with. Even so, George Anarchy's family is interesting and fun. And they seem to get along just fine. Sheesh. That's pretty much the total opposite of my family. Have you seen Rudolph, son? Damn, her boob is being a wooka! Have you seen the they are. Way. I'm uploading it right now. I mean, hey, you know, I might as well show it off on the fucking stream. The stream sprite has- it's like- so- it's like balloons. No, no, no. It's like balls. Uh, shout out to I Joshi don't... for making these fucking comparisons. I'm Look at this shit! <laughs> God! Damn! I f I'll never forgive them for the fucking pachinko sprites. <laughs> I'll never forgive the Japanese. <laughs> Oh they add big boobs for no reason, right. and I cannot lie. Huh? <laughs> he headed off to the bathroom a while ago. Is he still not back? Heh. <laughs> Maybe the poor <laughs> geezer dropped drop dead. Nimmin 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 nimmin. That's no way to talk about your own father. Still, this isn't the first time he's taken so long in the bathroom. Yeah. The guy's always been that way. Does he really have to take the magazine with him every time he needs to take a dump? Oh, what on earth might he be doing with those? Hehehehe. <laughs> well, you don't need to worry about that at all. As long as it's clear, I won't be letting him do that on him. <laughs> oh, I'll just have to get all the juicy details later. Sounds like Dad got his balls in an iron grip. You know exactly what would happen with that man if I didn't keep a tight grip, don't you? Oh, no kidding. You're the only one capable of frightening that uh, in, of reining in that old bastard. As a son, I'm more than happy to let you take over. Yes, leave it all to me. After all, that's my specialty. This woman is my dad's wife. Her name is Ashirmi Akiria. As you can probably tell from our conversations, she's not my real mother. She's basically my stepmom. That mom. My real mom died six years ago. Curious on is a woman dad married afterwards. I mean, I'm not a kid anymore. It's way too late for me now for me to start calling her my, calling a second wife mom. <laughs> and I doubt she still feels like using the word son on this massive kid who has no relation to her at all. We are little kids. We know there's nothing to be gained by fighting. We decided that, that we wouldn't face ourselves, force ourselves to pretend that we were still family. I decided to act a bit more frank with her. So she's a friendly neighbor instead. It's much easier just to keep a little distance instead of forcing ourselves to act all close and making each other uncomfortable. Kiri san has been pretty uh, has been very open about all this. Thanks to that, we've been able to get along pretty well. As we were capitalizing on Dad being away from the bathroom to badmouth him, the man himself came back, wiping his hands with a handkerchief. Mm. Woo! Battler. Hey, what's up, Dad? Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> Don't pinch my ear! Yeah. So you've been talking trash about me with Mom again, haven't you? What makes it so hard to show a little respect for your father? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Dilfuller. Ow, 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 damn it! That hurts, you old bastard! Stretch my ear all you want, I'm still not going to be able to fly! Come on now. Upwards, upwards, sideways, sideways, round in a circle, back the other way, multiply maxed out with an extra times two on top. Now say, Father, please forgive me for being so rude. Like hell I will! Find yourself some members only store if you want that much. Yeah, let go! This old bastard is my dad. I think I'm pretty tall, dad's, but dad's about the same height. I've been surprised that Auntie Ava started talking about dad's blood when she saw my height. By the way, my height isn't the only thing I got from him. It, seem to be having, it, seem, it seems having weird names runs in the family. 
Dad's full name is written like that. Can you read it? Not many could, I'll tell you that. That means the that, that mess of characters is pronounced Rudolph. <laughs> you must hate Grandfather for giving him that name. So that's no reason to pass that weird name attrition over to me. As the old bastard twisted my ear all over the place, Auntie Eva snuck up from behind him and grabbed his ear. Hey, Rudolph. Don't take your frustrations out on your kid. Yeah, that hurts, Aniki. The scene before me was a perfect re a realization of the trope that is of the older sister who deals that punishment to her pranking pranks through her younger brother despite his size. I think that's good enough for Alec to have I'll make sure to stretch out his other ear later on. Oh my apology. <laughs> Must leave some pulling for you to do cutie bed. Kitty I thumb. Rudolph? This is Deleva. Rudolph! Gives you lots and lots of punishment later on, alright. <laughs> You're one to talk on a keep bullying your little brother like that. Hideyoshi Nissan, I'd like to thank you very much for picking her up. If you hadn't been so generous, she'd still be unsold in the store. Oh, damn! You have my gratitude and apologies. Hmm? Who are you calling unsold? After taking two or three steps back, Auntie Ava unleashed one of her beautiful higher verse roundhouse kicks, which stopped just a centimeter away from the tip of Dad's nose. After starting out with Tai Chi, uh, Tai Chi Quan, Chuan for a figure, Aunt Ava then had developed an, in an interest in the Chinese martial arts. After that, she went through uh, karate, taekwondo, capoeira, and what is she learning now again? Well, anyway, they say a woman's weapons are her lower body, and that's literally true for, uh, for Aunt Ava. Don't you know this single direct blow to the side of the head like that would knock you unconscious? Not so long ago, I accidentally connected in a practice match and my opponent was out cold. Sheesh, what a pain. Guess I have to apologize for her tendency to lash out with her feet, too. Dad, completely unfazed, shrugged and smiled ironically at Uncle Hideyoshi. Ah, 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 you never had a brother or sister of myself. Well, I never had so when I see you two bickering with each other, it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. It sure is nice to have a big family and siblings. Oh, and why not consider making a little brother for George-kun? Already a fine adult who's about to go off on his own, so it might be a good time to have another child. Hey, have a little sympathy for the new kid and all the pain and suffering he'd have to live through. I'm surprised even George Coon turned out as well as he did after being born from that sinister sister of mine. And what an awesome kid he is. Please share some of that with our blockhead of a son someday, will you? That's not how it works. Let me reread that. That's not how it worked. It's thanks to Ava Nathan's proper rearing that George Kun became the good, gentle kid he is now. Isn't that right, Nathan? Oh, come, how? <laughs> Think so? Well, George still has a long way to go. By the way, How's your little Angie Chung doing? Angie. It's Angie. <laughs> Angie Chung doing. Heard she was vomiting. Oh, that's right. And I was hoping to finally see her face after such a long time. Is she alright? She often catches a cold when the seasons change. It's very frail. I did want to bring her along, but we decided to have my family look after her this time. I think that's a wise move. You'll be on the men faster if she's not exposed in that toxic headhouse. A child's health is always more important than an adult's convenience, don't you think? 
I know some of you have. Uh, uh, blah blah. I know some of great medicine for vomiting colds like that. When we get back home, I'll send it over right away, so be sure to give her some. Also, in that case, it'd be pronounced Ange. No, no, it's Angie. Yeah, it's Angie. Uh, like Western names. There's no Y. No, it's it's Angie. Trust me. The, uh, anyway, the Japanese know. voice actor said it. <coughs> yeah, the, in the fighting the game, they literally go, Shuramiya Anji. Oh, Anji. Yeah. Oh, Anji, probably. Yeah. So, it's, uh, it's, it's like uh, Angel, but Anji. Yeah. Uh. yeah. Alright, anyways, uh, Kiria. Okay. Thank you very much, Hideyoshi Insan. You always get your dad. Once the conversation suddenly veered off in that direction, we kids didn't have, didn't have any chance of butting in. For now, I'm just happy that Auntie Ava gave Dad his just desserts for tugging on my ear. Hey, Bob. Looks like, looks like we're still waiting for the weather report. George Anarchy pointed at the counter. The pending weather clearance sign was still stuck next to the scheduled department t departure time for the flight for scheduled board. According to Anarchy, smaller planes are more subjective, subject to winds and other effects on the of the weather. Not at all uncommon for flights to be delayed because of that. Wait a sec. It isn't really gonna shake, is it? Down here on the ground, it looks just... It just looks cloudy, not windy. Well, I guess it's different up where the planes fly. The weather's a bit uncertain today. Auntie Ava was looking at a, at a TV in the lounge. Oh, the weather forecast was being broadcast, informing us that a typhoon was approaching the Kanto region. A typhoon again? I guess we're doomed to these with the family conference being in October every year. Couldn't each use a better season? It's like typhoon, typhoon, typhoon now here. Oh no. Uh, uh, I agree. I always hoped we could have it sometime during around the Auburn Festival in mid-August. In that case, why don't you suggest that to Father and Nissan during the conference? Very funny. Why don't you do it yourself? Our brother would never listen to anything I suggested. No way. It doesn't really bother me that much to happen in October. <laughs> We're the one who complained about the typhoon, so I said ask them to change it then. That's all. I only said the typhoons always come around this time of year. You're the one who said you wanted to move it nearer to Oban. <laughs> well, you said it too last year. Did you say that it would be easier to... The schedule if we had a nearer Auburn? I've never said anything like that. Oh, yes, you did. I certainly wouldn't forget something like that. No, I didn't. You're the one saying that all the time. Are you aware? Stopping a kick just a hair's breadth away is a very high-level technique. Sheesh, women your age should be more proper than that. What? Fuck. Dad and Auntie Ava's argument was uh, from, from a couple of brats bickering. I expect it's because, although they normally act as mothers and fathers, uh, they turn right back into kids again when they meet their old siblings at these family conferences. Ava looks like a real adult, act analyzing it all calmly. I hope I never turn like that old bastard. I'm not sure they end up as an intellectual adult like you, Anarchy. Oh, like me? Oh, I still have a long way to go. I still have very little experience out there in the real world, and I need to work on becoming more bold and sociable. I think... I think you've surpassed me on all those counts, Battler Gun. I'm sure you'll outstrip me fast enough when you become an adult. George Anarchy scratched his head and laughed. As though trying to hide his embarrassment. 
Of course, he was just being humble. Anaki entered a university and became an apprentice in Uncle Hideyoshi's company at the same time, studying both academics and how to become a business emperor in parallel. Then, after graduating, he got into Uncle Hideyoshi's company as his father's aide. Piling up a lot of real-life experiences, he devoted himself zealously to his work. He even had grand dreams of one day standing on his own and becoming a lord of his own domain. Anaki is a real paragon of man, sparing no efforts to strive towards his goal. It's no exaggeration to say that I really respect him. And then, there's me. I'm nothing at all like Anaki. Living my happy-go-lucky idle high school life to the max. I've got no dreams of the future! Like to just sit back, stay cool, and let the money flow in. Uh, but of course, that could never happen. When Anaki was my age, he'd already formed an impressive objective, and had started devoting himself towards studying, uh, studying for that goal. So I guess I can't compare at all. Matt just says, sure, you can study in my company if you like cleaning toilets. Damn it. I'm not gonna be in, in the dead of that old bastard. I'll find my way myself. I guess that intensity is my one qualification towards adulthood. Should I go off on one of those self-searching journeys that are all the rage these days? Well, it's not like I could mooch off my parents for that kind of money. Oh, that me. Oh! Right then, Uncle Hideyoshi shouted out loudly. Uncle's a really nice person on the whole, but he does have a problem controlling the volume of his voice. Looked over, I saw he was greeting Aunt Rosa, who had come late. Oh! There it is, Aunt Rosa's son! Maria chan long time no see! Long time no see! Ah! Maria? Wouldn't that be it's good to see you again? Meet your uncle properly. It's good to see you again. There you go. I love her crown. Well said. How about some candy as a reward? Uh. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Oh, huh? Remember, right, this is the it. 80s. Uh, sorry, quick break. I have to go uh, thank somebody for money. I'll be right back. Dude, if that's anything like Deneb candy, then I do not want it. What type of candy? What? Almond Rider, guys! Come on! Oh, oh yeah. Deneb? Deneb? I, I have no idea what... Like What's a common Rider? Doesn't it come from his ass? What? What? What's a common rider? What's a common rider? Bug man. Uh, ah. It's a bug man. I have heard the name. I guess honestly I have no idea what it is. He's an idiot. That's all I know about it. Man, I'm excited for Evangelion Man's uh, Shin Common Rider movie. Oh, mm. yeah. I can't he believe he's work. actually doing that. Yeah, Shin Kamen Rider, like the original Shin Kamen Rider from like the 80s, or not probably not the 80s, but there was an original 90s. Shin Kamen Rider that was like, uh, he, that was like the fly. He was like an actual bug man. I think it was supposed to be like slightly more. <laughs> Seriously, I love her little crown accessory. I want one. I, love her I sell crown and crown accessories. <laughs> Maria, best girl. <laughs> oh, turns out it's just made of milk, honey, and melon. Isn't she melon. technically the only girl here? Because, like, the rest of them are women. Uh. Not even 15 minutes in, this is already better than your actually. Yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, this whole thing has just okay, been... This is, this, this, here. Here. this is this is what they do. And that's interesting because you need background before you start a murder mystery, of course. Like, uh, it's, it's better than the start of Higurashi, I'll say that. Yeah. I will give you that. Yeah. Wasn't that the whole yeah. point that it was supposed yeah, yeah. to be really yeah. fucking yeah. chill and, like, yeah. generic, yeah. and then, oh wait, everyone's trying to murder each other. Mm. Wasn't that the point of Higurashi? Isn't that also the point of this? Uh, don't. I mean... 
<laughs> yes. Zaz, that We're not sure why. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh yeah, hey wait, Bee Jerk, you probably know what's up, right? We're gonna have to let you into the fight room. Uh, which is where all the, all the people who know what's up go. Uh, but anyways. Back to it. Uh, did you read this line? I forget. Uh, oh, okay. uh, yeah, I read it. Alright, cool. Rosa-san, it's good to see you again. It's good to see you too, Maria-chan. It's been too long, kirie Nisan. Yoshinisan. And oh my, Battler Kun? How big you've gotten. Ah, come on. <laughs> it's embarrassing hearing that from every person I meet. Hey, Rosa. You're late. If the plane was on time, you'd barely have made it. Trouble making our train connection. So we're waiting on the weather yet again. So I much prefer a 30 minute plane trip to spend six hours bouncing out on a boat. We're just waiting here for hours. We're much faster overall. Maria Chan's gotten huge too. So how tall are you now? Mia parroted Uncle Hideyoshi's question, looking up, at him, looking up at her mother. I guess she really doesn't remember her own height. Right, right in the middle of a growth spurt. Their height must change every month. A few more years, she'll probably start looking very feminine. Mm-hmm. How tall were you the last time you got measured? She just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Don't you? Uh. I think she's grown a lot since last year. She turned nine years old this year, didn't she? Nine years old! Uh. That's right, you're nine years old now. <laughs> Good to see you're doing well too, Maria John. Up, up you. Uh, I, I, I guess you've gotten a bit too heavy to play airplane with. <laughs> George Anakin, what a rude thing to say to a lady. Here, I'll do it. Up you go! Aww. I looked her up in Anarchy's place, Mia Maria stiffened defensively, staring especially at my face. Ah, that's right. Last time I met Maria, it was six years ago, and she was only three years old. Of course she doesn't remember my face. Maria-chan, don't you remember? It's Badler-kun. used to play together, remember? Oh. I doubt you'll have any luck. The last time she met Badler, she was only three. You don't keep memories at that age. She must know everyone's fi uh, everyone's face apart from mine, because she needs them every year. But I haven't had a contract with the Shremia family for about six years now. So I'm not surprised this nine-year-old girl doesn't even have any memories of me. Even I can only barely remember having her being a three-year-old crybaby. Maria? This is Battler Onichan, Uncle Rudolph's son. Understand? Uncle's son is... Uncle's the son... Huh? Ah! The ooh is probably the sound of her brain breaking. I will understand the complicated explanation. I guess it was a bit too confusing for her. Maria Chan, this is Battler Gun. He's a cousin, like me. You want to meet son? That Oh. That's right. Oh. You, you got it. This part of Anarchy is what makes me really look up to him. For someone who isn't married, he's great at dealing with kids. I'm sure that'll be an ind indulgent father in the future. Maria looked straight at me with a questioning expression, as though asking whether it was alright to call me that. Yep, that's me, Battler. Nice to meet you, Maria. Huh. Battler. Maria. Mustn't address him without honorifics. 
call him Battler or Nichon. It's cool, Auntie Rosa. I don't sweat the small stuff. Right, Maria? We're buddies on a first name basis. Us two, aren't we? That's right! Maria, Maria, Maria! We were around for a while to make up for the six-year gap in our friendship. She probably still thinks of me as nothing more than a big new friend. But things will probably work out as we get to know each other again. But I'm surprised. Just the way I remember her being six years ago. Seems the people don't just, chi don't, uh, just don't change that much after all. I'm a bit happy that she's still the pure, innocent girl I remember. Her name is written... That. That one's not just so difficult to read. Uh, of course it says Maria. <laughs> yes, it's a very good description. <laughs> yeah, because there's a little bit of a cross in there. <laughs> Third girl's like a cross, which is pretty cool. The feelings don't really show up in her face, so it can be a little difficult to know just what she's thinking. That's just how she looks on the outside. On the inside, she's a sweet, normal girl. That was Maria's mother, Auntie Rosa. She's my dad's younger sister. Rosa's written like that. Here's a name that's totally not Japanese. Sorry to say it, but her name's almost as ridiculous as Dad's. We gotta respect her for not ending up as screwed up as he is. And think about it, all the names of my family sound foreign. Uh, just why his grandfather's so obsessed with this. Because of him, even us grandchildren have to put up with this weird naming sense. Even more knowing since grandfather's own name is perfectly normal. Anyway, there's, the one thing, there's one thing about Auntie Rosa that's a relief compared to the other family members. That old bastard and Auntie Ava have this annoying urge to tease and mock people all the time. Even if she shares, the, shares their blood, Auntie Rosa isn't like that at all. She had the most common sense among all the siblings. Uncle Hideyoshi, she is a kind aunt who's always, who will always be on the kid's side. However, possibly because she's more strict as a parent, she's not liberal with, la with handing out spending money like Uncle Hideyoshi is. Alright. Now you have the entire group of family members who are going to board the plane. So they waited for us all to gather, and that's what rang out through the lobby. Who wants to be the, uh... Who wants to step up and has a chance? <laughs> Our apologies for the wait. Warning will now commence to flight 201 to Nijima. We ask the passengers please form two lines in front of the counter behind the white line. Rosie, you still haven't gone through boarding procedures, right? Hurry up. No. Rhea, come on. Uh. We had to go through a metal detector before getting on the runway. Our small plane was as massive as an, inter as an international flight, but it was still a plane. Oh! <laughs> Oh yeah, I scrolled up by accident. <laughs> Alright, cool, nice. can I- okay, cool. Still plane. This time I ever hold, hold up a metal detector and check, and check this all. Is that a vortex with butterflies surrounding it? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But all of us could check with all the staff members out into the runway. <coughs> Come to think of it, everyone here is in the Ashurmiya family. It's like, it's like this is a reserved charter flight or something. Our group stopped in front of the entrance of the airplanes. Then our guide turned around and spoke, looking down at the passenger list, as she did. Uh -huh. Alright. Boarding will now commence. I call the names of the passenger list. Take your seats in order, starting from the front row on the right side, and going right to left, then onto the next row. We'll now begin reading the passenger list. Jiromiya Kiryoshi-sama. Oh, I'm first! Right here. By the way, do you have any candies, Eva? I've been looking all over for them, but I can't find them. Shiromiya Eva-sama. They're in my handbag. Get them once we're inside the plane. I've heard that candies are a good way to protect your ears from hurting due to the variations in atmospheric pressure when landing or taking off. That's probably but what that they're talking dumb. about. I hope I get a window seat! <laughs> ah, don't worry. There aren't any other kind of seats. From the Georgiana key, there are apparently only two lines of seats. Yeah, it's a small plane, all right. It isn't really going to shake, is it? You know me, I'm George Stenna. 
Ah, oh, right here. Don't worry about it, gun. I won't take too much. Shiromiya, back to that zama. Anaki, how much is not too much? You can't just swim if you fall from a boat, but if a plane crashes, you're screwed, right? We all get our own parachutes in our seats, don't we? Wait, we don't? Shiromiya, Rudolf, zama. Come on, Badler, quit being a wuss and get in. Ow, Dad! Don't push me! I don't get parachutes! Shiromiya, Kyrie, sama. Alright, stop fooling around. Let's move along. Ow, Kyrie! Don't push me! <laughs> this blockhead isn't moving forward! Shiromiya, Maria, sama. Chidomia Rosa Sama Maria Keep quiet Maria <laughs> Maria Maria uh, AC This is your pilot Kawabata We'd like to thank you for taking you to New Tokyo Aviation Flight 201 today We estimate the flight to Nichiba Airport will take about 20 minutes We are receiving reports of atmospheric turbulence there might be some shaking of the aircraft, so we ask you, you to not unfasten your seatbelts after takeoff. Anarchy, did that guy just say we need to wear seatbelts in a jumbo jet? Then you do them after takeoff. It's gonna shake so much we can't take them off. Damn it! You tricked me. It's gonna shake after all. Where are the parachutes? I know I should have taken the boat. What a wuss. <laughs> Legend of the Golden Witch. To be fair, I fucking can't stand turbulence. I always get shaky. That happens. No, but it makes me feel better about it because I also have a fear of heights. It, it just makes me feel better. <laughs> sure I can fly in a plane, better. no problem. I just hate turbulence. I'm perfectly fine going on airplanes. The only problem I have is the ear thing. Uh, I yep. guess. I have hey, it's the lay motif. <laughs> like, he said candy. We oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He like said candy, but That's it's actually happened. gum. That's Candace? the stuff that works just fine. We'll find out. Candace? Uh, I really want to travel at the time. Oh, they're just dropping Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> these are not spoiler characters. Yeah, these, these are, are all characters you know. You'll, you'll, you will soon learn. This is the fan. <laughs> I love how Zaz just said Nazi in big bold <laughs> text. <laughs> look, look. Give it a sec. <gasps> Yeah! <laughs> yes, we get it! <laughs> <laughs> there he is! There's the furniture boy! You will soon learn. You will These soon shots learn. Are gorgeous. You'll soon learn. Yeah. Janai. Umeneko no Nakakuroni. Rondo of the Witch and Reasoning. Rondo? Yeah, like a, a Rondo is a musical piece. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a form oh, no. of music. Like how this game has a fucking bop soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, this the uh, it's a form of music and this is the original music soundtrack. Is like Obon. Banging. Oh, this is the original soundtrack. There wasn't any editing. Done Nijima, for the mod. Makoto Nijima. Unlike Higurashi, that had a horrible soundtrack. My God, I hated that theme. Uh, anyways, different but different airport now. <laughs> Are you really gonna diss on da 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 There was there was there was some good ones. There was some good ones. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Hold on a second. I noticed there was a timestamp on these things. It uh, said 8 a.m. Yeah, yeah. Also, we have already right. We've been here for exactly an hour now. Bam. Uh, should have taken the boat. <laughs> the boat. Anna ba. Anna ba. Anna. Ria, that's enough. But what a surprise. Thought there was nothing that could scare a battler gun. This guy can't handle vehicles for some reason. I didn't know was I was a nameable character in an RPG. <laughs> Always yells about falling and sinking and stuff. You're a disgrace of a man, you are. Uh, shut up! I think I was seriously shaking way too much. I just got a little stressed. This is my first time on a small plane like that. You call that a little stressed? <laughs> Sounds like it'd be fun to take an overseas vacation with you, Bad Lagoon. 
Do you like to go to Egypt with your aunt? Get to ride a plane for a full 14 hours. <laughs> That's a good plan. Van Lukun, you should let Ava Nason tough you up some. Boy, were you hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, now you know. No, now, now. Everyone's got their own strong and weak points. It's bad to laugh at them. Ah, ah, ah. D Dad, Dad, you're laughing too? Hey, Maria Todd, you shouldn't laugh anymore. I not laugh anymore. Huh. God damn it. Being scared of planes really such a big deal. Everyone obviously thinks I'm a big oaf now. Car. Does that car have air conditioning? Oh, How maybe it did. We split up and took separate taxis from the airport to the harbor. From there on, we would be, we'd be take, we'd taking a boat to the island. Yeah, and they're right next to each other, so it's not that far. It'd be leisurely. It'd be a leisurely 30 minutes. 30 minutes by boat. After the pier where the boat to the island was anchored, we saw a silhouette waving its hand. It's Nathan! It's been so freaking long! Ah, ah Jessica John, it's been over a year since I saw you. That's been a year. You've gotten taller again, haven't you? <laughs> Give me that. It's embarrassing hearing that every year. Hey, Anarchy, you gotta be kidding me. That's really Jessica? Wait a sec. Arch Nissan. Massive beast. That one? We'll stare each other down. She definitely looked like the grown up in my memories. But I do remember her crazy way of talking. Yo, Jessica! What's this now? You're kidding me, you look like a woman now. <laughs> Those boobs! You even managed to get a chest! <laughs> Let me rub him! Let me! <laughs> Gather, she's your cousin! Hey, screw you! I'm a blushing flower of 18! It's like hair grows out, so other stuff! I think I just got boobs just so you can go and rub them, loser? What about you? Got anything to back up that ridiculous size? You remember to grow any actual muscle? You better believe it! I'll show you how much training I've piled up since back then. Oh, cram it. Beat you at your own game. This headstrong girl's name is Sure Mia That. She's born with the same unlucky star as me, sharing the same kind of weird name. You see, that is pronounced Jessica. She's Dad's oldest brother's daughter. That older brother happens to be the eldest son of the Assure Mia family. He says that also technically makes Jessica a direct heir to the Assure Mia family. Since Jessica and I are the same age and had, and had to be and had that type of boy-girl rivalry rivalry between us, most means of fighting and joking around whenever we had the relatives gathered. Jessica grew more quickly, so she always had me beat beat in terms of size and physical strength. When we scuffled as a contest of strength like this, it usually went Jessica's way. So even though I clearly understood understand that I'm bigger now, it's simply like I can't win against Jessica with my strength. <laughs> yeah. What are you getting all serious for? Hey, hey, hey! This is nothing. Jessica, you've got weak. Shut up! I'm a woman over here, believe it or not. No way I was always going to be stronger than a man. Well, that's certainly true. And me and I put on my arms all went to your ch all went to your chest after all. So they'd be a pretty even super test of strength between my arms and your boobs, don't you think? <laughs> Told you, my boobs are for you to feel up! Die! On you! On you! Your height says you're an adult, but what about your other places, huh? Fucking damn! Stop it, idiot! No! I'll be ruined for marriage! Don't touch me in strange places! Let's stay stuff, people are gonna misinterpret! Honestly, I was so surprised at how feminine Jessica had become that I'd seriously horsed around to hide it. Well, yeah, considering what a bossy brat she was six years ago, anyone would be surprised. 
And I guess she's just as surprised. That's why I was expecting she'd lose to me in a test of strength. Losing that easily, she must be shocked at how much I've grown in the past six years. Six years. Once again, I'm being shown just what a huge gap of time that was. Up. Cool defeat! I have no match for you anymore. That's not true. <laughs> Even Bowery could have must have had his weaknesses. Right, Maria Chad? Don't, Maria, let's keep, like, keep that a secret, okay? Oh? The hell's that? <laughs> Sorry, but you won't be seeing that weakness of mine now. After all, the nightmare plane trip is already over and done with. Only thing left is the nice, quiet splashing of the boat trip. I never thought I'd become so fond of that piece of junk boat. <laughs> um? Is there something wrong with his head? You'll, you'll understand soon. Very soon. At the time, I didn't understand what Aki meant by that big smile. Jelly! Jelly. Jelly? Jelly. Mike's muted. No. No. Jelly, you're muted. Hey, yeah. Sorry about that. And how we here? Oh. Uh oh, Axon. How big you've grown. Uh, who's it this time? It's an old lady with an apron. Oh, oh yeah! That takes me back. I remember now. Remember her, by the way, Kun? You remember? She's Kumasawa san, one of the servants. I can never forget Simu Kumasawa Pachan. Many haven't aged a bit in, the past, in these past six years. Oh, wait, you haven't gotten younger, have you? Oh, ho, ho! Oi, oi, my skin, I think they're not smooth and silky. <laughs> okay, this is not an old woman, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna try my best. I can't... Okay. Look, hasn't my chest grown even bigger as well? Want to give it the rub? <laughs> You're gonna be trying to get it! <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> my breast rubbing is strictly limited to this. <laughs> I swear it gets less horny over time. <laughs> Even I had some bouncy ones in my youth, you know. <laughs> Granny trying to get it! Now, now, please feel to have a go. Go, yeah, Granny! <laughs> give me a break! <laughs> it's chicks I'm looking for, damn it! Not Granny's. <laughs> Jokes I've cracked about Jessica are being used against me. <laughs> Come to think of it, she always was oh, the type to tease people. You want to travel time? Stop that now. People with one foot in the coffin shouldn't jump around. To spar with the young is the most rejuvenation medicine. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> now my favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't sure if I could make this work, but I think I've done it. Honestly, you can get more boisterous if you want to. <laughs> like, oh, ho, ho, ho. oh ho, ho, ho. There you go, that's perfect. You go. <laughs> that's I don't know if I can keep that up, though. Oh, you, can, you can try your best. Uh, just, just do your best. He's a side character. Oh my god, parts, so she's she amazing. Be, you won't have a lot of fucking dialogue. Don't worry. That's okay. Anyways, David time. It's rare for you to come pick us up, Kumasawa-san. What curious turn of events is this? Normally, whenever you're entrusted with something to do, your lumbago always kicks in. Ha 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 ha! Did I even pick up? You're gonna have to get to be a little bit louder than that. Eva sama, you are as harsh as usual. I found myself with some urgent purchases to make, and while I was at it, I thought I could welcome you all. It does give me a bad impression that the one waiting to greet you is a decrepit old woman. Ha oh, ha ha! Aunt Eva spoke sarcastically, but Kumasawa Bachan's years of experience are nothing to sneeze at. She was more than capable of smoothly and coolly letting that, com that letting that comment slide. 
Well, I'd rather not say it, but old Kumasawa Bachan may be your past their prime as a servant. I detect as though she's in good health in between her headaches and the lumbago her body is wearing out. To tell you the truth, the very fact that she's still working is impressive. How old is she this year again? Must be pushing 80 now. Feel that she's still able to act so brightly. You just seem to get more and more lively. <laughs> oh, that's right. Here you are. The tea I was talking about before. Look, I bought some. Please do try it later on. I want to rest assured of the souvenir bag she'd taken out of the suit out of her suitcase. Even if she had remembered that that pro the promise that she had apparently made last year and faithfully forgot uh, bought it. The sort of thoughtfulness was just like Auntie Rosa. She wasn't the kind of person who could forget or break a promise. As for Kumasawa Bachan, she seemed des deeply touched by the fact that not only had Aunt Auntie Rosa remembered that year old promise, she had also bought that gift for a simple servant like her. This woman is Kumasawa Chiyo san. That. A senior servant who's been working for the Assure Me Ahead house for many years. As you could expect from someone her age, she isn't that good at manual labor. From kitchen work to cleaning and, laund cleaning and laundry, She's a kind of super servant who can handle just about anything. Seems like her only flaw is a tendency to slack off. She tries to get away from heavy or troublesome work by playing up her chronic <laughs> disease. If it was out Bachan's case, maybe we should call that sort of lazy craftiness. Well, it probably doesn't impress those paying her salary. Ah, well. Even if she's pretty flaky when it comes to work, I can never dislike her. Mm. That's probably because of her cheerfulness and her constant smile. Hey! Glad to see you're still in fine spirits. How's your back doing? Then. Even with the medicine, it's not getting one whit better. According to the doctor, nothing more can be done for this one. It's what they call an incurable disease. Oh, oh, oh. Is that picking up okay? Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. Blows me away how you've just kept getting pretty at Jessica Chan. Be glad you ended up like that, so hey, Nason. Really? But suddenly, I don't think I look like her at all. <clears throat> I mean, I don't even want to be like my parents. Because I got zero respect for him. Now, you shouldn't say such things. It's amazing how many people don't want to be like their parents in our family. Ah, that's me! Oh no, don't just start taking after me. Your nose looking like mine already pisses me off. What are you talking about? Ridiculous how completely alike you are. And like your father. Come on, you can't be serious. Just how am I like Dad? Or he's comfy and copy in arrogance and self importance. Mother's blood is especially strong in you and me, son. Are you staying, Rosa? Oh, absolutely! Ralph Nissan and Rudolf Nissan are almost unbelievably like Dad. Alright, alright, already. Why am I the only one under fire from the girls? Hideyoshi Nissan, please, uh, help me out. My, my, Rudolph Kun. You're always so popular with the ladies. I'm jealous. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, ho, ho. As Yoshua, you're popular enough to make me jealous. Oh, then, everyone. Then we head over to the boat. Now, Maria san, let's get the boat together, alright? We're on the boat together! Yes. Huh. Everyone gets on together! Hell yeah! This time, not, this time around, I'm not gonna be scared. Used to being shaken by the waves. With this piece of junk fishing boat, that's afraid of the shaking of the engine breaking down and the boat drifting off. Ah yes, Battlekin, I forgot to tell you. 
That fishing boat was completely decrepit, so it was taken out of use a few years back. Now we've got now we get taken to the island in another boat. Alrighty! Battler's first time in a new boat! <laughs> it's super comfy! And freaking fast! You can go at crazy high speeds! Oh that means less trip time, right? That sounds great! I mean, a boat may be better than an airplane. If you're telling me we can spend even less, a little less time exposed to danger of sinking, that's really just awesomely great. Hmm. Not we're gonna fall, wanna fall again? That's only on airplanes. Everything's fine now. No, it's apparently a modded high-speed boat the captain's pride and joy. It's like he's tinkered with it quite a lot going on about he could attach four high efficiency propellers to it and how it can break 40 knots or something like that. Bragged to me so much I ended up memorizing it. Me too. I remember since we were told about it every year. The captain said that since he lost a speed contest the foreign fishing boat a long time ago, he had become obsessed with modding. He told us about all about how his opponent back then could go over 30 knots, even though it was only in a fishing boat. To fulfill his thirst for a revenge match, he created an awesome whole new super high speed modded boat. I'm sure you'll just love it, Battler! <laughs> super high speed modded boat? First thought was that this would be much better than some beat up boat that might sink at any time. For some reason, I'm getting this feeling of foreboding. Nah. Bounce. Bounce. <laughs> oh, it's bouncing. It's bouncing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, I've been in a boat just like that. That thing bounces all over the place. <laughs> <to> look at. <laughs> hey, Mappa, maybe you should too. swim to the island. Balakut, you shouldn't lean over the railing so too much. You might fall. Uh, gonna fall. Gonna fall. Damn it! This is why you were all grinning before. Super high speed boat said they've been modded to hell and back by his captain as a personal hobby. Instead of nothing like that battered old fishing boat from six years ago. My fucking controller is vibrating. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah, this thing has controller support. Wow. Damn. Whoa! It's shaking, it's shaking, it's shaking! I'm gonna fall, gonna fall, gonna fall! Dude, that water looks fine. If you fall, you're gonna have a good time. Gonna fall, gonna fall. If I fall, I'll be in the sea. I'll drown, goddammit! Where's the parachute? No, no, wait. Where's the buoy? Give me a life jacket! <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, Battler? <laughs> it's supposed to be. <laughs> Jessica Chan, Maria Chan, it's not nice to tease. Battler Cut, if you're scared, then just don't come up onto the deck. I think that if you stay inside the boat, you'd be a little less afraid. <laughs> That's a no thank you, Anarchy. Shipwreck victims are always the ones inside the boat. Sarah's usually the one on the deck during the accident. So I'm staying right here, but it's shaking! I'm falling! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Rhea, I told you to behave yourself. That look totally looks like you really can't handle it. I'll tell the captain to slow down for you. Whoa! Auntie Rosa! Thank you! <laughs> Even on the sea, that's just I have safe driving. Reduce speeds, point, and call! <laughs> Don't do that, Rosa. Ordeals are necessary for the young. <laughs> right, Cutler Cody. You can conquer this much, no problem at all, right? Or is the land actually getting closer? Oh, you won't be able to come to Egypt with your arms. 
<laughs> Whoa! Auntie Ava, you're me! Oh no! I'm gonna fall! Life jacket! Parachute! Whoa! No, 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 okay. Turn over and think that way. What's the enemy aiming for? He wants to make me afraid like this? That's what he's aiming for. Too bad! Like hell I'd be scared! But stop it! I'm gonna fall! Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so after I made a huge fool of myself for a while, Auntie Rose had a talk with the boat captain and he slowed down for more, to a more manageable speed for me. <laughs> this speed's a bit better. Earlier I didn't even feel alive. The next speed I was capable of tolerating was apparently extremely slow. That just now is completely insane. The whole boat was shaking. Sliding and leaping on the ocean surface. I feel like I was riding on the back of a flying fish. Jessica was still guffawing at me as I leaned against the railing, tired and disheartened. <laughs> I lost in that strength contest earlier, but I'm glad to know I've got the edge where it really counts. Seriously. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, go ahead and laugh. One of these days I'm gonna find your weakness and I'm gonna get back at you. <laughs> and then those <laughs> that then your boobs will be mine to squeeze. Uh. <laughs> well, we'll see about that if you ever do find it, okay? <laughs> oh. What? All worn out. Yeah, Paddler. <laughs> All worn out. I don't want to die on land, not in the ocean or the sky. Maria was patting my back, so I patted her head in return. Her expression was blank, as usual, but I realized that she wanted to, con to console me. Paddler, the captain is throwing uh, in drinks to make up for this. Have a drink or take a break, why don't you? To calm yourself down. Go down to Keaton's Kumasawa Bachan brought us each an ice cold drink with drops of moisture on the can. Even from Kumasawa san's big grin, grin, my parents inside the boat were probably all rolling around laughing at my moment of pure terror. Damn it. I'm so embarrassed that I can't bear to face any of them. If I didn't change the subject somehow, I had the feeling I'd be the butt of everyone's jokes for the whole trip. I think it's something harmless to talk about. Hey, Jessica. I don't know if across your crafts and not knots are you doing. Oh, my old man and my mom. Fortunately, they're fine. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, every other word in their mouth is study, study, which pisses me off. So jealous, because it doesn't look like Uncle Hideyoshi or Uncle Rudolph say those kinds of things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, when I was slacking off during exams, I was always getting told exams, exams, exams. I thought it was just annoying, but now I'm grateful. Eh, I knew it. George Anarchy is magnanimous as ever. As for me, I have to look after myself. No one is saying a thing to me. Well, it's not like I'd listen if they did. <laughs> Battlers, huh? Have you still not returned to your birth home? Well, I kinda go back now and then. Still lots of clothes and stuff up the previous ass. Battler has two homes? Um, uh, uh, something like that. Why? Why do you have two homes? Hmm. Only Maria, who couldn't really grasp the situation, voiced her naive question. However, the others just shot nervous glances at me. She didn't have to respond, even though they knew the answer. Maria! You can see the harbor now! Look, look over there! Can you see it? Ah. Not a harbor! Not a harbor! Apparently Jessica was trying to be nice by changing the subject. Ah, well. I'd rather not talk about this if I can help it. But it's uncomfortable to have it treated like some kind of weird taboo. I don't mind that much myself anymore. I am an assured 
truth is that, in the past six years, I lived with my grandparents. Oh god, I gotta look away from the screen for a second. That's fine. Wait, you gotta do what? You gotta look away from the screen. Are you getting seasick from a visual level? Oh. Wait, are you? Thing is not turning right. Oh, fuck it. Up. Okay, you can. Yeah, look away yeah, for you, a bit. You can look away if you want. I'll let you know when you can when you can talk about stuff. How long is the boat trip? Uh, the boat trip's wrapping up actually. Using with my grandparents on my late mother's side. I've been even using her family name. Those grandparents passed away one after another. Uh, I basically had no choice except to go back and live with the old bastard. Don't get me wrong, I just, they didn't just run away from home or anything like that. The only one at fault here is my dad. I don't really blame Kyrie, so. Being able to do that, hold that old bastard's reins and hide him out of. hide him out is no. is no. 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 I'm gonna, uh -huh. Hold on a second. Uh, I'm gonna try and. Can everybody just like. Everybody doesn't know what's up looking from the screen for a second. Look I'm, away, look away, look uh, away. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna see if I can. If I can no problem. fucking. I'm already looking away. Alright, cool. Yeah, I need, to see, I need to see if there's an option to turn that off because now my stomach's starting to churn. <laughs> uh, rumble strength. Lift text went on. Okay, unfortunately, I believe we are stuck with the fucking. with the rumble. Okay. I'm not having any problems. You have to endure this for a little bit. I I have done VR. Well, I are you opened getting my this eyes yet? I fucking yeah. I I've yeah. done VR yeah. too. This has gotten me more sick. <laughs> huh. I'm yeah, this like is a... doing nothing for me. I don't feel I bad don't at all. Know. I... Thankful. Yeah, I'm doing fine too. Anyways, George, go ahead. <clears throat> we'll be getting there soon. You're gonna clear his throat trying to change the top the topic. Kelly. Oh, right, uh, please forgive my indiscretion. It seems this old woman has said too much already. If I have heard your feeling. <laughs> I don't mind and it's- I don't mind it and no one's feelings are hurt. Don't worry, Kumasao Bajron. Kumasao seemed to regret speaking out of turn. But I was more concerned about being worried over something like that. So I stood up and passed it off lightly. After that, I sipped my drink and headed over to Maria and Jessica, who are gazing at the silhouette of the island. You ordered up, can I go? Unfortunately, God. Unfortunately you uh, have Crimson to look says, the screen. keep one eye open. Maybe that will help with the seasickness. God. I'm still here. I'm still, I'm still good. Aww. Oh, Saw me island! Saw me island! Sit in there! Where is it? Oh, I see it now. After six years, the island hasn't changed a bit. Why is it still shaking? <laughs> <laughs> the small island still in front of us had gotten pretty close. But this is not in your version that you read? No, because oh. I, I play the base game. I've I've played it unmodded twice, so I wanted to get the optimal experience, quote unquote. So I got oh, the wow. fucking I got the fucking Imaneco project. And I guess it includes motion sickness in, in the package. <laughs> <laughs> The island's name and is... You guys can laugh it up all you want, at least you don't feel like you're gonna chuck your weenies. The island's name is Rokinjima. It's a small island about 10 kilometers around, located in the Izu Archipelago. Oh no, not here! <laughs> Since they call this archipelago the Izu 7, lots of people think they're uh, 7 islands, but that's not true. They're they actually more than 7. Rokinjima is one of the minor, minor islands that, didn't get can that don't get counted. Even considering <coughs> that, there are probably a few people who know about this island. After all, only the people of the Ashurmia family come to this island. In other words, it has no ties whatsoever to outsiders or tourists. You'll never find this island's name in a travel brochure. This is because all of Rokinjima is an estate possessed by the Ashurmia head house. Only the Ashurmia family lives there. Only the people connected to the Ashurmia family co uh, come and go there. Nothing, there's nothing there except a harbor and a mansion. The vast majority of the island is still uncultivated forest. It's such a waste. It could be made into a nice golf course. However, when you realize that the entire coastline is a private beach, that sound pretty magnificent. You might have realized that by now, but to put it simply, well, the Ashurian family is just rolling in dough. The fortune passed by the head house is apparently vast. 
and dad of the and the others who make up the branch families have built up plenty of wealth for themselves, finding success in their respective businesses. I was living as a commoner, a commoner's life in my grandparents' home these last six years, so I've completely forgotten. The old bastard's house really is elegant. Everything about it uh, is tuned to match the snobbish taste of the annoyingly rich. Come to think of it, I guess that means George, Anarchy, Jessica, and Maria, and I are all wealthy, high-class gentlemen and ladies. Needless to say, none the of rich. us feel that way at all. If at anything, I think Jessica feels motion sickness. I don't see myself being rich, and George Anarchy, who takes self-discipline very seriously, doesn't let himself get too comfortable. Jessica is always complaining that she'd rather move to the city than, than be rich. And Maria's the still a kid who wasn't even interested in money at all. I guess that attitude is itso itself is, sno is snobbish. Ugh. The perspective of people in poverty who can't pay the bills. Very lucky you even have the luxury of thinking that way. This isn't the place to explain anything further, so I won't. Anyway, it's the same as not being able to choose the parents you're born with. I didn't ask to be born into a rich family. I don't think some it's something I should be hated for. You can be pretty trying when people are prejudiced against you just because you're rich and refuse to judge you by your merits. As I pondered these sentimental thoughts, Maria leaned over the railing and started shouting. Cron, you have to look oh at the screen. <laughs> okay, yeah, that actually is starting to freak me out. <laughs> Fuck, I, I'm just why, not gonna look at it. it. Let me know if why, I have a line. Con, do you just voice your like, characters? Maybe, while maybe, while maybe while like, uh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so maybe, like, put your, okay. like, fingers over your eye and just kind of peek through the holes of your fingers. Yeah, the gaps. Phone. Yeah, I've just got this shit minimized. Let me know if I have a line, okay? <laughs> okay. I'll just listen. Let me want to be paying attention. What's wrong, Maria? Did you drop something? Maria kept yelling, gone, gone. And Ward Zeloni would think she had perhaps dropped something, but she was actually pointing out over the ocean as she shouted. What's wrong? What's gone? I'll look uh, for it too if you want. What is it? If she dropped something, she probably would have looked down at the floor. Maria's pointing out over the ocean. I almost that she had seen something over at the uh, out over the ocean, but she kept saying that something was gone. Strange. However, since my last memories of this place came from six years ago, I was able to spot it before Anaki, who comes here every year. Huh? If I remember correctly, wasn't there a tori or something on the top of the small crag around here? That's right. It was definitely there. I remember it well, since it's like a landmark. The first thing we greet you is you get closer to the island. Ow, you're amazing, Battler. Even though it's been six years, you remembered. It was here, wasn't it? Oh, wait, it was here, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, so yeah, I got me too. It was here, wasn't it? I remember too. There used to be a shrine and a Tory-like thing standing out all alone on that crag. And now that you mention it, they're, they're gone, aren't they? They definitely were there last year, I think. Maybe they were washed away oh, by the waves or something. Get annoying. Or this aggressive motion blur. It was a small it crate. It probably got brittle because of its exposure. I think so too. It actually disappeared during the summer. Apparently? Okay, let me bring it up. Huge lightning bolt fell one evening and smashed the shrine of such. This fucking bobbing! It's so good you look, we can keep complaining about it while we can power through it. The ominous sign to have a thunderbolt fall upon a declaring god. Lightning be gone, lightning be gone. Kumasawa-san smiled impishly as if teasing us, rubbing her hands together. However, Marie was apparently taking it seriously. She stared fixedly over the ocean to where the crag enshrining, Craig enshrining the local guardian deity was supposed to be. Oh, no, 
Enough, Kumasawa-san. Maria isn't old enough to understand this kind of joke. It's alright, Maria-chan. It's just a coincidence. Nothing scary's gonna happen. Go down if you put a hand on Maria's shoulder to calm her down. But Maria's sharp-eyed expression didn't fall at much. Oh, Maria muttered that word over and over. Apparently repeating a single word over and over is a habit that Maria's had for a long time. However, since the words she was saying were quite literally ominous, it was a bit creepy. Hey now, Maria. God damn it! The disaster really, really will come if you say that word over and over, you know? I tapped Maria's shoulders. And then, Maria whipped her head around, stared into my face, and spoke, blinkingly. Oh, Chelly! They said to Chelly, uh, man, that's one hot mic you got there. Oh, is that that fucking airplane outside? Yeah. I'll mute. Disaster huh. coming. Huh? And just where is it coming from? Answered lightheartedly, trying to break the tension in the air. And the reply, oh, thank God. <laughs> Oh, it's gonna go back. It's over! I can't no, see again! Back, and in reply, Maria held up a finger, raised her arm high, and pointed up to the heavens. I looked up and saw that the sky was still just as cloudy. But it had grown a great deal more leaden than it had been this morning. That's right. They were saying a typhoon was approaching. I spent one night on the island, but if the storm doesn't pass quickly, you won't be able to make it to school on Monday. Well, I guess that makes for a pretty good excuse to be absent. He apparently sent something ominous in the cloudy sky. He'd been muttering for a while now. Girls of Maria's age tend to be very impressionable. She's just about the age where many girls start to get excited about six senses and whatever they have psychic power potential and stuff. In a way, being sensitive about things like this isn't really out of the ordinary for a kid like her. No, oh, goddamn it! No! <laughs> I, I, I called it. I, knew it. <laughs> I, I called it. Damn it! it. it it's pain. Pain. <laughs> keep going. Keep it's alright. It's alright. I'm once time. again gonna minimize. So the weather might be getting worse around tonight, but tomorrow it'll clear up and become a pretty blue sky. Hmm. Pretty blue sky. Uh. That's right. But tomorrow it'll be a pretty blue sky. There's no rain that doesn't end. No clouds that never clear. Uh, rain that doesn't end. Clouds that never clear. Uh. Sure, the typhoon's coming. It'll be gone before you know it. It's all right, Maria. Uh. Fucking, you're like you're so great. I know you. I know it's annoying, but you're actually fucking spot on. <laughs> yeah. Wait, can you actually do like uh, audio? I'm curious what that sounds like. Uh, Big thing. Sure, I guess I can. Of the character. Uh, oh wait, uh, I have been sent uh, information. I assume regarding the distinct. Uh... Yeah. So uh, for future streams, you can edit it in the config to remove the motion, uh, like okay. the screen shake. Oh Good. My God. I'm gonna keep this open. <laughs> we will rem uh, we can remove the motion. I'll be saving the day. Thank God. Or the mo just the motion in general. Fuck. Maria started yelling. Ooh, ooh. Looked as though she was having a tantrum because no one could understand what she was trying to say. What in the world is Maria mean... trying so desperately to warn us about? I was just going to say that motion blur was used kind of good in Higarashi though. You might not want to completely kill that. Say, I'd say get rid of it during the boat scene, but the moment yeah, it's yeah, only for the, the, boat. the screen shake, that's it. Uh, oh, okay, it's, it's, it's then like it, it's yeah, forget it. It's specifically removing the screen shake, yeah. Yeah, fair enough, forget it. Able to understand her, we could do nothing but feel a vague sense of foreboding. I that everyone can feel the supernatural. But that it weakens you, isn't it? It weakens as you age. And the Maria, the youngest one of us all, Still possess some kind of sense that the rest of us have lost. I don't know if that sense is sending her a warning. At that moment, Kumbasawa-san quietly opened her mouth. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you the first time, my bad. 
Boom has it that long ago Rocky Nejima was. The power's gone. Let's not talk about that now. Let's get off the boat first. <laughs> this is Kumasasa, I'll just tell some kind of story. Deska sharply interrupted her. Deska, that was an extremely firm reaction. I wanted to push her further, just out of simple curiosity. I think by how Jessica was acting, it wasn't difficult to imagine that there was some that it would simply inflame Maria's unease further. But I did try to press her for the story. The odds were pretty good that it, it, it wouldn't be anything bright and cheery. Tully. Tully. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, oh, I do apologize about that. The wind here is hard to bear for the elderly. So if you would excuse me for now. Gossipers have no reason to hang around after they've, they've, been, they've been told to stop chatting. When Kumasawa finally realized that she'd overstepped her bounds, she went back inside the boat. I wish I could go back inside the boat. I would like God to get back it, inside Yoshi. the boat. <laughs> also, this is a good song. After she left, oh my Yoshi God. came out to replace her. <laughs> Since he showed up part way through, he completely failed to notice the complicated atmosphere that hung around the scene. That your flesh and unwittingly swept the, that atmosphere aside. So in the end, he was in his unwittingness that brightened up the mood. Looks like we're almost there. All right, just a bit more. Took forever at that at the speed we went today, didn't it? Why does it look like you're all about to throw up? <laughs> you all, you all know whose fault that is. <laughs> Uh, Uncle Hideyoshi, bring me a- <laughs> Give me a break already. <laughs> Gone. Ha <laughs> ha, keep on twisting the knife. Firstly, because the battler is taking forever! Aww. And Rebby comes to the conclusion no one's going to listen to her. She hung her head wearing a fretful face. Did it. George Anaki crouched down to meet her eyes and spoke to her kindly. Morita, there's nothing to be afraid of. Because we're all together. There's nothing to be afraid of if we're all together. Go ahead and say it. Oh. There's nothing to be afraid of if we're together. Yes. There's nothing to be afraid of, uh, if we're together. Oh. Con, you're dead to go, ooh. Yeah, George Anakin knows what he's talking about. We're all together. There'll absolutely, there'll absolutely never be anything at all to be scared of. Right, Jessica? Yeah. <laughs> no doubt about that. Rishmi-san always tells the truth, Maria. Yes. I don't lie. So trust me. There's nothing to be afraid of if we're all together. Orjo oh. Nichan doesn't lie. I trust you. There's nothing to be afraid of if we're all together. She jumped into George Anaki's arms and hugged, and hugged him tightly. After Anaki patted her head, she jumped away again. Her facial expression returned to so completely normal, so completely to normal that she looked like a totally different person from the moment before. She was once again the ordinary Maria. Huh? Nothing to be afraid of anymore because we're all together. Oh, oh. Yeah, that's it. You look all better now. You're strong, Maria. Good girl. My uh, good girl. Why is that green? <laughs> hey now, what's going on here? Maria Chan didn't get sea check, sea check, shit, sea shit. Get sea check, did she? Oh, she's getting there, oh Hiroshi. She she uh, sells she shells by the seashore. Nagumi, nama nagumi, nama tamago. There. Nice. Nice job. <laughs> we'll 
something like that. Be arriving soon. Arbor is already drawing near. And the liberation from this nightmare will be over soon. It sure will! <gasps> yes! <laughs> oh god. Yes! Yes! Nako no Nako Karoni! <laughs> oh, we made it! Clock. 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 Welcome! <laughs> and third. Welcome, Welcome to Rock and Java. You have been chosen. The boat or? gave a big shudder. He docked to the harbor. The boat driver came out and jumped to the pier with the mooring rope. A large man in tuxedo was waiting there uh, for us with a warm, smiling face. I didn't know him, but judging by his clothes, I guessed that he was a servant to be assured me I had house. Is it him? <gasps> Welcome home, lady! You were quite late and I began to worry. Mr. Butchie! <laughs> <laughs> My boy, Goda! Aw, <laughs> oh, thanks for caring! More like note to Ernest of all time to have, uh... I don't know anything well, about him. Well, battler scared shitless. So we had to slow down for him. Seriously, what a pain in the ass! <laughs> Shut up! I don't remember this when the shoe's on the other foot someday. Uh, at this rate, the world will spread around the world will spread around the entire family. And I'll become this big conversation piece during dinner. Even with that, even without this, everyone be talking about me just because of that six-year gap. But now I've provided them with an even juicier topic. Damn it. Why does he assure me why does he assure me and me and family have to live on this isolated island? Why couldn't it be a small town in the middle of Japan somewhere? <laughs> In the meantime, oh, the boat no. finished its mooring. The small plank was lowered so we could get down. Get up, get up, and get down. One by one, our parents came out of the boat. You must be all quite tired from your long trip. Madam, please let me assist you. Thanks. It's been a while, Godasan. How are you? Thank you for your concern. It is always my pleasure to serve. Hello, Isn't this your first time meeting Gorasan? If I'm not mistaken, you weren't working here six years ago, correct? Indeed! So please, allow me to greet him for the first time. It is an honor to meet you at last, Battler Sama. I'm pretty secure about my height, but you're huge. It's definitely our first time meeting. I never met a big guy like you, yet I never forget it. It is a pleasure. I'm Battler. Your return has been keenly anticipated, sir. I've been working on the as for the Assure Me Ahead House since the year before last. My name is Goda, your servant. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. If there's anything you would need, please feel free to rely on me. Good, son. It's been some time. Uh. It has been too long, George Sama. Please allow me to assist you. Bone. Bone, stop uh, looking in clouds. Sorry, you were having a conversation there, and I was curious. As or usual, you're the re a receptionist pro. If you ever need a job, just give me a holler, okay? I'll hire you, just like that. You do me too much honor. Please allow me to assist you, Hideyoshi-sama. Orange, you might want to lock down clowns. Oh, uh, did I not lock down- Oh no, I locked down clowns for, uh, every- No, wait, the entire section should be locked down, what the fuck? Uh, I guess there's- Oh, it doesn't- Imagine, imagine having to lock it down because people can't pay attention. Alright, there, I've locked down readers as well. Now none of you can see things. Alright, anyways. Go something lend a hand to everyone as they disembarked. Greeting them as they passed. His speech and mannerisms had the refined polish of a professional. His very, he was very graceful in contrast with his initially rough-looking appearance. His large sight made him seem a bit scary at first. He was, he, was a bit, he was much more polite than my first impression of him had, had led me to believe. Hmm. It's still not locked, by the way. Uh, <laughs> fuck, man, I don't know. Just worry go, about it. Let's later. just go. Let's just Destroy go. Destroy it. Let's go. Like... You can go by the honor system. Go, go. The honor system. Let's just keep reading. All right, whatever. Fine. Uh, you, know, you know what I can do. I trust nobody's gonna be dumb enough to actually try and read and go into clowns while we're reading this. Mm -hmm. Someone already. <laughs> he came to serve on the island. Well, then there for is Dumbag. 
But he has endlessly worked on similar jobs far before. <laughs> After everyone disembarked, the mooring group was untied, and the boat started to steer away from the harbor, probably returning to its home port of Nijima. The captain waved his hand farewell. Rie contentiously, uh, conscientiously waved back. Hmm. I just realized why something's been feeling out of place to me. I can't hear the cry of the seagulls. Oh. There Go. it is. Birds? I remember that whenever we came to this island, seagulls always welcomed us with their lively meow meow cries. <coughs> and because of that, we never heard the cries of the seagulls in any other place. I have this feeling that I've come home to a family conference. Except for the small part of the island where those of the Ashurmia head house live, where Kenjima has been, uncult left, has been left uncultivated, apparently transforming into a paradise for wild birds. Seemingly some, seemingly some cliff face rather had become home to a huge seagull colony. This island was always full, was always full of them. So sure, since those seagulls didn't come to greet us, I felt a bit lonely. Long pause. What's wrong, Battler Kun? Oh, Auntie Rosa. Nah, it's nothing really. I was just saying I can't hear the seagulls. But I kind of feel a little lonely. Oh, you're right. They're always so lively, but I can't... I can't be hide nor hair of one today. Oh. <laughs> no seagulls! Hmm. Maybe it's because the seagulls are having a gathering somewhere, too? Maria, did you want to see the seagulls? Oh, wanted to. What happened for all of them to disappear? Maybe Jessica made all of them into shish kebabs and ate them. Huh? Hell, don't say disturbing stuff like that. And don't throw me under the bus. Look at Maria all confused. Oh, no, no. Look how Nate made them into shish kebabs and made them into shish kebabs. Oh. Did not. I did not. Why the hell would I do something like that? That's right, that's right. Jessica made him the shish kebabs. Skin and meatballs, liver and onion. And a meatball. Liver and onion. What the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> As I made fun, of made fun of Jessica, Maria tagged along looking like she was having fun. Oh, she really knows how to join in with things. Alrighty then. Time today I'll make you my number one follower on Twitter.com. <laughs> As I smiled at her, she beamed back overjoyed. I guess ha I guess happy for this little bit of solidarity. That's not it's, that's not it, Maria Chan. I heard that wild birds are attuned to changes in the weather and atmospheric pressure. And it looks like the weather will get worse around tonight. It's possible they hurried back to their nest. Oh. Not kebabs? The Gonichan didn't make them into kebabs? I did not! I did not! I told you I wouldn't do stuff like that! Sorry, Battler, you admit right now that you lie! Battler can. Maria Chan is a naive girl, so she takes even jokes seriously. You should choose your jokes more carefully. George Anarchy gently scolded me. Even though I outstripped, I outstripped Anarchy in height, he still com commanded a respect in my, as my elder. No choice but to obediently apologize. Hey, my bad, my bad. Maria, that just now is a joke. It's just today the seagulls are all quiet in their nests. Who am I? I was having fun that you were actually tricking me. Your pure eyes seem to accuse me. Accuse me. Maybe I'm a little overboard with her after all. Yeah, that's right, that's right. What George Anaki said is true. The weather is so ba is bad, so they probably went home for today. Doesn't mean they're gone, does it? Right, Auntie? That's right. 
tomorrow when the weather gets better, I'm sure they'll come back and then you'll hear their meow meow cries. Huh. Robo, you maybe want to rephrase that a little bit. <laughs> Now that, uh... Man, Khan's doing a fantastic job selling the nine-year-old little girl. <laughs> I mean, you're, I mean, it's a it's good... A... You're doing good at the voice. I mean, like, you know, th there's no apostrophe in there. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I mean, comma. I don't want them to get better, so they come back. Wait for tomorrow. Wait for the weather to get better. Maria's mood lightened, and she started looking forward to tomorrow. The seagulls would come back and fill the skies. Still, George Anarchy really is amazing at taking care of kids. I can't remember Anarchy taking good care of me as well when I was a brat six years ago. Anarchy may have had, may have, well, might have had quite some talent for this kind of thing. George Kuhn, you're so amazing at taking care of kids. I think you could work in childcare. Yeah, it's like you were born to do that. Maybe this seems more you than doing business in some company president office. Some shit. Oh no. Childcare is a very respectable job of its own. It's not something you can do merely by liking children. You're truly modest, George Kuhn. But that Lacun, you're quite good with children too, you know. Earlier, even if it was just for a time, Maria seemed to be having a lot of fun. Keep on playing with her like you did just now. Just choose the jokes carefully, though, all right? <laughs> Auntie Rosa winked at me, giggling a little. A real mother, I thought to myself. She's happy that Maria looks like she's having fun. Come on, Rosa. Can you brats too? What the hell are you doing? Get a move on. Alright, alright, we're coming. The old bastard's beckoning us to hurry up. Better get moving. It's not like it'd be too late to have the same discussion after we got our luggage out in our rooms. Well then, everyone! I shall lead towards the guest house where you'll be staying. Please, this way. Got a sign called everyone, called everyone and started leading us. Yeah. Kamasawa-san brought up the rear. Stairs. More stairs. Dirt path. Yeah. A serpentine twisting path led us through a dim forest. It ran a bit uphill. I guess the path was made twisting so the slope wouldn't wouldn't uh, wouldn't be felt too much. But personally, I'd have been happier that if, if they if they'd been man enough to make some stairs in a straight line. No doubt they made the path twisting on purpose. Put on, put on areas of distance and importance. Before long, we saw garden-style stone steps. Ah, now I remember how it, how it goes from here. Go up these and... Uh, uh, uh. <coughs> so I wonder if turning off, like, the boat movement would actually stop that. And but hopefully not. I don't know. Stop I'm okay with steps. the slight movements, it's just the... Just the movements like boat, air bobbing up and down, that kind of get Yeah, I'm just wondering yeah, about the boat, just keep setting. it on for now. Yeah. A beautiful guest house came into view. Oh, that's a good song. Its facade was lovely, of course. But even more than that, we couldn't help but have our hearts stolen away by the splendor of that beautiful rose garden that spread up before it. Ah! <laughs> it's as beautiful as... Wait. It's as beautiful as ever this year. A real delight for the eyes. Hold on a second. As they reached the top of the stone steps, the people welcomed in by the rose garden voiced their appreciation one after another. Aren't the flowers less lively this year? It must be because the summer wasn't warm enough. I also believe that is so. When one compares with last year's blooming, it is a pity that the year is somewhat that this year's is somewhat inferior. Even so, it was a delightful rose garden. I remember all the huge amounts of roses to greet me every year, even over six years ago. 
The Rose Garden was the first thing that like, greeted the people who came into Ro to Roken Rokenji Ro 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 Rokenjima. Even our parents who came every year could not but let their wonder slip out. Moreover, even though it looked like a powered up, a powered up version of the garden from six years ago that was in my memories. This place is always so amazing. Sure that. <laughs> <coughs> Would be so wonderful to have a rose garden like this in my own home. Give it up. Who do you think would take care of it? Roses are a real pain with bugs and diseases to worry about. Can I go? Sorry, I had to yawn. As they are. In fact, I hear the cutie that Nisan tends to her rose every day. And to make sure it doesn't get nibbled at without her knowing it. Huh? I haven't heard anything like that. What's this now? Yes, I do. Though with him, it's the rose that goes off after the insects, so it's really more like some nasty carbon in his plant. Oh, oh that's talking about her! With me. Come on, Rosa, can't you give that a rest just for today? I have put that sort of thing completely behind me. I wonder. After all, you are a womanizer on an almost genetic level. <laughs> no need to worry, Rosa son. If a rose gives me too much trouble, I chop it off at the root. Uh Jelly. Jelly. Sorry. All right. Oh, 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 oh. Such frightening talk this is. Guys, who are, who are, wait, guys who are popular with the ladies always, are always forced to live with danger at their side. I sure hope I turned out a bit prettier in my next life. Hideyoshi Nissan, as I keep telling you, it isn't like that at all. And Kyrie, stop it, you're freaking me out. You're making my rose wither. Hey, Marita, look over there. <laughs> the, these roses are especially magnificent. Roses are magnificent. Hmm. Uh. Yeah, that smells pretty sweet. Look, this matches my elegance perfectly. Cut it out! Maria's gonna imitate you and get hurt by the thorns. She yelled at me as I leaned in with an exaggerated gesture to smell the rose's scent. I thought she was overreacting, but when I turned around, I saw Maria Im Im imitating my every movement. They were putting a broad smile on George Anarchy's face. Hey, now, uh, Maria Chan, be careful. I'm not used to George's lips being so, like, high detail? Um, pronounced, no yeah. Visible? Like, I'm, that, I'm, yeah. I'm so used to all these characters having, like, really flat mouths. I mean, this is the only sprites I've ever read this with, so I'm used to it. Eh, yeah, fair enough. Rose thorns can, be, can hurt. Huh? George or Nichon? This one rose is strange. Huh? Nichon. Huh? pointed to a single rose. I mean, I understand why she found it odd. In the midst of all those magnificent roses, just one single rose was withering. There wasn't any particular reason. Some roses flourish and others wither. That's all it really was. Maria seemed very concerned about there being only one unhealthy rose in a group of healthy ones. She has to feeling somehow like it's been left out. So, you feel sad for this rose because it's the only one that isn't healthy. Hmm. Huh. Those are all healthy, but this one's sad. Well, they all bloom and wither on their own. The only reason that one withered now is because it bloomed earlier than any of the other roses. Yeah, that's right. Well, they just bloomed all over the place. It built its duty and went to rest. You shouldn't, ju you shouldn't get worked so worked up about it. 
Seeing that Maria was getting really worked up about it. <laughs> then Maria's pure, sensitive nature was making her feel some emotional pain for the rose that withered alone. Even though she understood the logic of it, it still felt lonely to her. Okay, Maria Chat. Well, why don't you look after this rose until we leave then? Huh? Ironicky straightened up and felt around in his pocket. He took out the wrapping from the candy he had eaten on the plane. He twisted it into a thin string and gently tied it on the rose as a sort of marker. Hey, that's pretty cute. Uh, let's mark it with this. Later on, you can come and give it some water. I'm sure Mr. Rose will be happy. Water. I think I think you should give it Mr. Rose in here a name. I'm sure that will make it happy, and you'll get to know, know it a little better. <laughs> Though she still wore her unusual sullen face, Mira crossed her arms and began considering that this in, this intently. At the very least, she appeared to have, some, to have been completely pulled out of her slump. Nice going, Anarchy. Huh? Ah. Ah. son has always been really understanding. And all but respected. Yeah. I guess it's just his gift. We gotta learn some lessons from him. Was this garden as fancy as it was as uh, blah as this when you were a kid? It's only after I left the house that it became this grand. Though I was more fond of the previous rustic garden. Nice how filled with it too much with his slightly questionable taste. It was much better the way it was before. Hey buddy, you gotta think positive. No matter how it might look, its beauty now is something to be admired. You'll be able to relax a lot better if you look at it this way. I knew you didn't mean it like that. It was just saying I would have liked you to have seen the old, more wonderful garden as well. Now then, everyone, if you please! I shall be guiding you to the rooms now. Yoda-san called everyone to ask if we were ready. But our hearts had been completely stolen away by the Rose Garden after a year of absence. And we didn't even lend him an ear. Since we weren't in a travel group, it was like we had a strict schedule to follow. Besides, for our parents, there was a fond old birth home that they had returned to. There felt no obligation to be pressured by anyone. Noticing the situation, Yoda-san continued to wait, while with a wide smile. For our parents to lose interest in the roses and tell them to guide us to the rooms. Is this, is this it? Oh. My! Hey! If it isn't canon gun! Oh. Oh! It's oh, been oh, a oh, lot! It's been so long! How are you doing? This is all. Joshi, it's your son. <laughs> Uncle Hideyoshi suddenly shouted! WHAT FUCKING GO! <laughs> He's named after him, what do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the boy! He's getting oh hard on going! I cannot oh, wait until know, I get to my son. And, and there it crap. is! In the direction he was waving, like there was a slender boy. Meeting him right after a huge man like Goda probably emphasized his small stature. The boy was in the middle of, tr of transporting piled up gardening tools and like into a wheelbarrow. When he realized he was being called to stop, he set down the wheelbarrow, took, it, took his hat off, and bowed his head. Good afternoon. I figured he was probably younger than me. There was a general atmosphere surrounding him that he was a servant, too. Though he did greet Uncle Hideyoshi back, if he himself seemed like he might be unsociable. It was a greeting that lacked feeling. When Gosan noticed that her interest had shifted towards him, he went to the boy's side and introduced him to us. Tatlo-sama, I shall introduce you! He's one of the servants who served the Ashurimiya head house. Kenan-san, greet our guest! I am pleased to meet you. 
I am the servant cannon. Uh, this is also feels like a good time to mention. Uh, there is a fucking there's a big character list that that that's been yep. popping up. Is that a family tree? Uh, yeah. Uh, for the it's record, the hey, uh, for the Crimson, record, Crimson. What do you mean, bum elbow? What? Anyways. Uh, uh yes, he's got bad elbow. Uh, we can read this later because it's not necessarily super relevant right now. Yeah, you uh, can see the full body sprites here. Uh, but if you want some context, uh, red means family connections. Blue is servants, and then this is just kind of like a weird outlier person. Yeah. Anyways, go ahead, Josh. I already read it. Oh, you already read the line. Yep, my first impression wasn't wrong. You get the feeling that he was unsociable. A bit of a poor speaker. In contrast with Gota, who, who was extraordinary, extraordinarily polished as a servant. It's impossible to feel the, the, the immaturity you'd expect of someone his age. When Gota son urged him in a whisper to give a bit more of an introduction, the boy named Cannon only cast his eyes downward. Cannon son! Could you perhaps give, a little, give them a little more of it as a greeting? I can't. Because we are furniture. Oh. Uh, he was refusing to greet us out of spice. Okay. Rather, he gave us the impression he didn't know what else to add to his greeting, and he could do nothing other than stay silent. Uh, Anon Kun's a man of few words. He might not be that sociable, but deep down, he's a really good person. Wrong? Uh, kinda cut out a little bit. The line didn't right. work. Okay. Don't get him wrong. You've been working here for three years. Was it? Oh yeah, you've been here a year longer than Godasan, right, Kanonkun? Even though it's not like he made a super bad impression, Jessica hurriedly backed him up. I see. Apparently, him being unsociable works against them all the time. Cool. Nice to meet you. I'm Battler. I'm 18. How old are you? Yeah. <laughs> a silence. Is evaluating whether it was a question that must be answered or not. Here again, Jessica plowed ahead. Um, uh... <clears throat> if I remember correctly, he's two years younger than us, so 16, uh, right? Yes, that is correct. It looked as if, uh, given a choice, he would prefer not to tell us his age. And the one to tell his age probably because he thought he would be looked down upon for it. I remember that when I was around his age, I hated being asked how old I was by adults. I see. Sixteen, huh? That's gotta be a delicate time. In that case, I, sh I asked something I shouldn't have. <laughs> I'm glad you're about our age. Just be cool and call me Battler. And I'll call you Cannon. Thank you very much. But just the sentiment is sufficient, Battler Sama. That's gonna look flustered for some reason. You gonna think that my impression of Cannon was, wondering be was uh, worsening because of his rejection. Well, I doubt a girl like Jessica understands her fret his fretful male heart. As his elder, even by just two years, who would lead him into adolescence? I can help myself to understand that. Cannon son, could you perhaps be a little more courteous? A smiling face is also the duty of a servant. I apologize. I shall make an effort. Oh, oh, oh. oh no, come on, son is trying his best, isn't he? Seems as though he was often worried about worried about his discourtesy. And apparently, he hadn't improved a bit. Though some kept his business smile, but let a small sigh of resignation escape. Well then, I still have work to do. If you'll excuse me. Look, Cannon himself is uncomfortable with remaining silent here any longer. After another per, uh, punctua punct uh, perfunctionary bow, he turned his, on his heels and started pushing the wheelbarrow again. Just then, suddenly, the wheelbarrow wobbled and fell, scattering the load. I guess the wheelbarrow with its, with its single wheel caught on a pebble and lost its balance. What have you done now? Now quickly, clean it up! Kodasan urged him along in a low voice, with the reminder that it as a servant's shame to present a clumsy appearance in front of a guest. Showing that he understood quite well without being told, 
Ganaku and Willisley relo uh, reloaded the wheelbarrow with the fallen objects. He'd be fine with the light locking gardening tools, light looking gardening tools, shovels and such, but he looked as if he was having trouble getting his arms around lifting up some sacks of fertilizer. Are you alright? You're so careless. Here. Milady, you will tear to you to some of your garments. Please leave it to him. An elegant gesture goes on to the shovel that Jessica had picked up. At his back was the figure of Canada, who covered the sacks of fertilizer. Aww. Dirty your garments? Don't worry. Why not? The ones I'm wearing aren't that elegant. Besides, I hate guys to make the, wa the waitress pick up the fork they dropped at the, at the restaurant. Lift out the other bags that had fallen. Of course, they weren't light, but for me, it was a piece of cake. Kanaku tried to turn a surprised eyes towards me. It was the face of one who would never have expected to receive help from a gift from a guest. Balasama. That's not necessary. I'll take everything, so. Don't you worry. Man, look it, but I've got to wear cans. Kanaku <laughs> looked like he hadn't yet. He hadn't got yet. yet bleh. Like he hadn't yet gone through the gro his growth spurt and was stuck with a sort of weak body. I guess that kind of weighs a bit much for him. It's quite heavy, isn't it? It's natural it'll be difficult for you. Kind of good, don't worry about it. Okay, my time to shine. Ends up with a boat part from before, right? Ah! Did your antics earlier could be written off just like that. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it later, Cannon Gun. Battler is a laugh and a half. Gonna fall! Gonna fall! Run! 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 Oh god, my throat. Now that the job seemed quick. Banter made the job seem quick. Before I knew it, all stuff had piled back into the wheelbarrow. For letting you see such an unsightliness, I beg your forgiveness. Very well enough now. PLEASE GO! Things are just a disgraceful thing to be seen by the guests who are supposed to be made welcome. Must have been hideously embarrassing as a servant. Pressed by Go to hurry up and exit, Ganon Kuhn left. You'll be too harsh on him, Dodo something. Wouldn't it have been better if you'd helped him instead of being a boy? You are quite correct. I deeply, deeply implore your forgiveness. Twitching a smile, Godasan apologized him elegantly. Kanakun has tons of things he's good at, too. It's just that being young works against him all the time. It's a cry in shame. No, no, no. It's a prickly age. Eh? You be nice to him. Keeping a tad lip is just what you want in a servant. Rad Kumasawa song. Hi. Yeah, you really can't keep it Oh, 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 Rudolph Sama, you truly are hard. There's no serpent to silent as I, of course. Everyone smiled wryly at that shameless lie. Even if she herself didn't believe that, not in her wildest dreams. She, th she said that to loosen us all up. Yeah. That's the kind of character Kumasawa Bachan used to be. The mood that had stiffened a little was clearing up in a twinkling. in a twinkling, actually, yeah, that's right. Thanks to Kumasawa san's cheerful smile. I'd like to put down the luggage soon. Goro san, how will we to split up for our rooms? It shall be the same as last year. I shall guide you. Please. This way! Head to the trim and elegant guest house. This is gonna be our temporary quarters for the night. For a night. Hmm. Ken watched over a hedge as all the guests head to the guest house. Then he left his left to let his eyes fall on his heavy sacks of fertilizer, piled up on the wheelbarrow. In his mind, he kept going over his previous mistakes. Badler, making it strong and picking the sacks in front of him. The sacks he couldn't lift himself. As if they were feathers. For an outsider, that's an observer to guess what emotions that fervor had struck up in Canada. But as far as you could tell by watching him hang his head from behind, you, know, you couldn't just let go. 
Muttered words escaped his lips. Those words he muttered were so soft they didn't even reach even his own ears. Even I. Cannon hung his head, slightly biting his lower lip. Inner Yowie Finn and me is awakened. <laughs> You're not the only one who ships Battler and Cannon. <laughs> yes! It's a very common ship, actually. Alright. I remember the Rose Garden, but I don't remember this guest house at all. Was it built, like, recently? Dorian, visitor's retreat, was around the gate, the gatepost like thing, but since everyone called it a guest house, I followed their lead. The brand new western style guest house that stood, over, that stood overlooking the rose garden had a magnificent design, carefully done in harmony with the garden. Correct. It was just built uh, the year before the last. Since then, we've been having them uh, let us sleep over here. <laughs> yeah. People seem to like this place more than that junky old mansion we've had forever. Wish my room was over here. Oh. I want one too. One too. Well, so you call my house upper class as well. But I was reminded again how completely ordinary it was compared to the head house. What a shocking display of wealth that they would build this kind of awesome guest house for guests to come over like once a year. Eva Sama! Hideyoshi Sama, please do make use of this room. Rudolf Sama, Kyrie Sama, please make use of this room here. Oh, yes, I do appreciate how pretty and elegant this place is. <laughs> Sternstein truly is wonderful. I can't- I can handle the western style for a few days, but it ain't longer than that, and you need the good old Japanese style. Japanese people just relax best on the tatami mats. <laughs> They've been fighting over making our new house Japanese style or western style. Mother still holds a grudge about father having started the construction as Japanese style, and they bicker all the time about it. Let's get along so well, George and son. I'm jealous as hell! Uh... Mine are so frosty! Yet they're right with each other when it comes to my grades. Unbelievable. All the rooms seem to be two-person. I was grateful because now I wasn't gonna be forced to share the same room with the old bastard for some bullshit reason like being a family. Besides, I figured those two wouldn't be able to enjoy themselves with someone like me around. <laughs> What's that creepy smile about? But we're thinking about something dirty, aren't we? <laughs> something dirty? Of course not. Please enjoy your stay. Ow! 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 ow. <sighs> that hurt, you old bastard! Once again, Dad pulled my ears from behind. Cut the crap. I'm getting a stomach ache, and I'm not in the mood for this. You're the guest of honor this time around. You play as nice as possible with Dad and Anarchy and the rest. At the very least, pay attention to what you say in front of Dad, got it? His wisecracks go over like a lead balloon with him. Jessica Chan, what's the mood of our family had been like lately? Hmm. Even his last year, I guess. Considering they kept saying he's got three months left, he's as lively, grumpy, and irritable as ever. Meaning he's in his usual bad mood again this year. Ugh, and the only one who's able to take care of him is Genji-san. Kelly. Seems that the master will only open his heart to Genji-san. Italy, us small people cannot even get an audience. Shuts himself up in his study again. Probably doing nothing but that weird black magic of his. Just for a hobby is his own damn business. When he starts sneaking up the place, it really gets on my nerves. He just stay in that study and never come out again for all I care. <laughs> you shouldn't talk to 
You shouldn't talk like that about. Hello. You shouldn't talk like that about the elderly. We're all indebted to him since he rebuilt the Yashiramiya family, and a little gratitude wouldn't hurt. Hmm. L. Three. Being rebuked by George Anarchy, Jessica has no choice but to take back her th her thoughtless remark. The Yashiramiya family was a w was wealthy beyond belief. But that, of course, meant that all its members were eccentric people, really at odds with the rest of the society. Oh god, this is the fucking penis lamp, isn't it? <laughs> Head of the family, standing at its peak, in other words. Her grandfather seemed to be a particularly eccentric and terrifying person. Even for our family. Dad. What does it look like a penis? Yeah, I mean, like, look, you got the fucking, uh... Wait, what? Yeah, so... I remember like Rose. Yeah, I remember. I think, like, I think you just have it on the mind orange. No, no like I, re I remember about? somebody specifically. Yeah, this is that dick. There was somebody who specifically described it on Twitter as like a penis lamp, and, I, and now I can't unsee it. Insane. Doesn't can't look see like it at all. I mean, I, I guess don't the, see I guess it. the shade is a foreskin. So it's like you get the one. Uh, do we have to do this? <laughs> it's, it's peeling back. It's Guys, so flaccid. It, I, I'm sorry I haven't been doing my lines as quickly. Can we please forgive me and not do this? <laughs> it's, it's fine. I seriously, don't see a penis. What the fuck are you I guys also talking about? Fuck. I don't see a that penis. Post somewhere. I don't see it. Maybe I mean, it's like, uh, maybe it's just on the mind or it. Okay. Maybe if your penis was fucking curved like that. Look, look, something, <laughs> look I'm just look, saying. Look, 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 Head of the family was a violent man who rained blows on his sons with his own fists. He even beat his daughters mercilessly with a wooden sword. He was not traditional to these kids. It wasn't the same with their names. Because of that, even his grandkids have to suffer. Well, I have absolutely no trouble believing the terrifying image they painted him. I don't have any memories of meeting him over the years, but I remember his face was full of menacing thunderclouds. Was making the people around him sh uh, shrink away with a sharp look. I remember that room's atmosphere got so tense whenever he was around he couldn't even breathe. But my dad said right now that me being a guest of honor now carries a little more oomph to me. Six years ago, I was in grade school. But I'm a high schooler now. There's no getting away from it. If I don't show him respect, things will probably get serious. <laughs> Ooh, scary. He does look frightening, but he's not completely terrifying. He's definitely never unfair. He's just not a pretty talker, that's all. I'm George and Ethan. You've been the family darling since, like, forever because of your awesome traits. Right? Father treats us completely different! <laughs> I've been slapped with a wooden sword. On my ass! On my ass! My maidenly naked ass! <laughs> yes! That's gonna be good. Well, you're the hair yes. of the Yes! Just a good job. <laughs> also, there's a gray area on my sprite between my arm and torso. Hmm. Grandfather is giving you special attention. A wooden stick? You have to realize that his strictness shows how much he's expecting of you. Oh, come on. Seriously, I could just turn the succession over to you, George Nissan. It's a bit of a heavy burden for me to carry. Especially on my ass. <laughs> ass. I think I already said it before. This goes the daughter who will inherit the head house. The pressure on her shoulders must be, must be different from, from us cousins of the branch families. Huh? Heavy? I hold it. We get lighter. Thanks. <laughs> it's all right. It's not gonna get pushed on you, Maria Chan. I'm gonna bear that cross until my grave. Or. Okay. 
While grim for Maria's innocent consideration, seeing, seeing that Jessica could not easily rid herself of the anxiety of the future that remained visible on her face. I guess I'm no different. Any high schooler with exams looming ahead is bound to have an, anxi an, an anxiety for, for, a few, for the future they can't hide. Rhea, come here. We'll be in this room with Mom. Finally, kid. Apparently you're with me in this room. Here. No. This is a surprise. We're in our parents' room. Wow. Your cousins are probably all going to gather in one place anyway. I went and told them to make it a biggish room. Aww. I can hear a bus too. Mm. It's better than being together with Mama. Mm. Mm. Okay, you like it here better too, Maria. Alright, so I'm in George and mine, but we'll give you special permission to come in. Keep it a secret from your, from your mom, alright? Her mother, Auntie Rosa, was right behind her. Maria still answered, striking her, striking her with her fist clenched tight. After her parents put the luggage in the rooms, they gathered again in the corridor. <laughs> so, brats, what are you gonna do? Are you cousins just gonna stay here and chat? Then they were heading to the mansion to announce their arrival. I only would have had to follow them and greet everyone together. But if that had been the case... That would have just said, you guys come too. But done with it. As long as it's alright if we don't come. So, what do we do? It's gonna be time for lunch soon, anyway. Better let the kids unwind here. Besides, if worse comes to worse, this might be the last chance they get to play outdoors. Yeah. Go to! Maria, you housed it for Mama, okay? Behave yourself and wait here. Now that Maria had been told to sit past it, we couldn't just leave her behind. George Anarchy realized that immediately and gave a clear reply for all of us. Well, we, well, we'll accept your offer and house it. We have lots of stories to tell each other after a year. That would be best. Batlacoon has six years worth to tell, after all. Yeah, yeah. I'll take care of the house like a good little boy. Kuma's done with son? I'm gonna stay here, too. Leave the rest of the adults, and us kids will break. <laughs> break, break. Great. Kelly. 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 Kelly? He's, He's muted right boy. now. Kelly. Here, boy. Kelly. <laughs> Jelly! 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 Grim's in, uh, I've been wanna... saying it, but my mic has been muted! Oh ho oh, oh. uh, I'm terribly sorry. I was actually paying attention too, I just didn't realize I was muted. That's fine. It's alright, man. Jelly. That would be for the best. Oh. I'll report it to Madame. Then everyone. I will be guiding you to the mansion. Please, this way. Other kids aside, George is an adult now. Wouldn't it be better if you came with us? If we make him come, poor George will be the last one left out. Interacting with his cousins is also important. Well then, see you guys! Built up one after one after the other. The time he had guided us to, from the harbor, Yoda-san went ahead with Kumasawa-san at the rear. As we got in the cousin's room assigned to us, George Anaki asked us, asked us to excuse, excuse him for a second. Blah, blah, blah. He rushed over to Kumasawa-san, who was following behind the disappearing adults and seemed to be asking her for something. He soon finished his business and came back. What's up, Anaki? Uh, no nothing, nothing. I just, um, wanted to ask something. Me too! Me too! <laughs> How could it be that George Nissan asks Kumasawa-san and doesn't ask me, I wonder? I don't have a clue. 
Uh, no, no, you uh, misunderstand. I'm not sure what you're misunderstanding, but. Uh. Now, like he was getting pretty tongue tied. Like he has something to hide. Jessica had the dirt on him. Whatever it was, whatever it is, only really Jessica knows, and I is no fun at all. And I don't. Yeah. Hey, Maria. I thought we're the only ones who got out of the loop, is it? Is it now? We want to hear what they're talking about, don't we? Huh. Why do you want to know, too? Why do you want to know, too? Uh, 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 I fooled around my like, ooh ooing with Maria. That's no, I'm telling you, it's, uh, it's no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Liar! You suck at lying. Now confess! Maria, you tickle his right side, I tickle his left. Huh! On the right side, that one on the left! Huh! Oh, wait, wait a second. Oh, wait, you two. Wait, uh, stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Danaki rolled around the bed in an effort to get away. Maria and I played around chasing it. Something in the back of my mind telling me that I'm a high schooler now, and not a damn kitten. But in spite of that, I miss this kind of fun. A warm kind of fun. <laughs> George Nissan was asking Kumasawa-san. E? Hmm? Well, you know how it is. It's been a year since he last came to the head house. Apparently he's really dying to say hi to any servants that might have joined or quit in the meantime, see? Huh? Hey, hi, I'll say hi too! What the hell? I don't even feel guilty about Anarchy. Hmm? That's not it, is it? Maria, don't be fooled. Anarchy's still hiding something. Resume interrogation! Oh, yeah! So stop it, seriously. <laughs> Maria Chan, you two just stop already. <laughs> Probably busy with cleaning our lunch arrangements. It's alright, we'll go and greet them properly afterwards. Basically, you want Shannon out here to greet you, not that Goda getting in the way, right? <laughs> Shannon. Shannon. Ah, uh, I remember that girl. Still a servant now. How is she? House. Ow. Oh. House. Hallway. Big manor home. Oh yeah, this is By the house. Oh, go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, By the way, not so bleh, Nason. How's your headache been lately? It seems to be pretty serious for the for a time. Milf alert! <laughs> yeah, no, that's a really good one. <laughs> Wait, whose mom is she? That is Jessica's, Jessica's mom. mom. Oh, Jessica, right. Uh, explains there. Yeah, I've been much better lately. Thank you for your concern. <laughs> All right, here. Present for you, Natsuhi Natsu Nezan. Thank you once again. I'm always receiving gifts from you. Is this black tea? Serve tea with peppermint and lemon balm. It's a blend from a famous store and is supposed to be good for headaches. I thought it might help you too. Was always, was always a conscientious woman. Probably because she was the youngest of four and by quite some distance. She managed to grow up without harboring the, venom the venomosity of her siblings. Her consideration may not see soften her expression for just a moment. But it was enough to undo the many years of anxiety that had curdled their expressions into the blend of bland indifference. Yes, you always were saying you get those headaches. Pull yourself together. Jessica-chan will have her exams this year, won't she? 
Isn't that a turning point in her life? How can she count on her mother like that? Besides, Natsuhi Mei-san, you're three years younger than me. Can't you pull yourself together? I apologize. I was born with this discomfort. Ava sometimes fails to choose her words carefully, but even though she hit it with a smile, her comments aimed at Natsuhi contained shards of obvious malice. Of course, that didn't escape Natsuki. She frankly contained her urge to grimace and pretended to ignore Eva. A bad look her will have his exams this to your rent. But also, can you be a little concerned too? For the sake of your own son, get serious to the point of getting headaches like Natsuki and Eva. If I don't say anything, he automatically goes against it. So what should I say? Maybe the opposite? That it's okay for him to mess around? That's probably the only thing he'd obediently listen to. In your family, he knows she needs fun. Didn't George do really well in his exams? Please, teach me the secret to controlling children. <clears throat> well... Probably because I haven't... I've convinced him why he should study. Study isn't worth anything on its own. That's right. The real point of study is train is to train yourself in the art of research. And that you don't know. Wait, research in what you don't know. If you can't do that, you can't be useful to society. I'm not talking about math math or writing. You need to learn how to learn. That's splendid. It would be nice if our Jessica could understand that, though. I don't mean this too seriously, but as it is, as an heiress of the Ushinomiya family, she's... Do you really have to force her into becoming a successor? Women have to find their own happiness. Parents shouldn't be deciding that for their children, right? Hold your horses, Eva! Each family has its way to raise their children. You shouldn't be pushy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Natsu Ine-san, don't take it the wrong way. The light shining in through and it, the light shining in through the window was quite warm despite the cloudy weather. There's a dark mood about the room. It probably caused headaches for, for, people, for other people beside Natsuhi. With the brush away that mood, Kyrie brightly made a suggestion to all present. Uh, sorry. Oh, this black tea has a really lovely aroma. Let's drink it at once. I believe that in Japan you can't buy something like Leopold's black tea anywhere but Ginza, right? Kidding me, son. How knowledgeable of you. It really was worth buying. Kyrian rose up their seats and made as if to prepare the black tea. Natsuhi forestalled them. Thank you both. Let us save that for later. One of our people will soon be coming to bring some tea, so please relax. Leave it for the lady, you two. Let them treat us to a welcome drink, at least. Rudolph gave a subtle signal with his eyes from then sat down again. Kiri and Rosa understood instantly and immediately returned to their seats. The guests had already been greeted, and so it was time for some tea to be prepared for them. That tea was late, and having the guests talk about making some themselves was an embarrassment for the host. Nazi bit her lower lip. Frustrated with the ineptitude of the servants who were to taking too long to bring the tea. Seeing her face, Ava, Ava with a hesitation, started to giggle. <laughs> we're trying to know we have known what, what was taking place in the parlor. And she came in pushing a dish cart and piled with tea. Uh, 
the Nazi gave her a pain to look for no apparent reason, and Janet couldn't help but flinch without knowing what she had done wrong. It's me. She'll prepare some tea for you. Oh, Shannon Cam, it's been a while. It keeps getting prettier every time I see you. Need to look up. Need to look up. Oh, Christ. <laughs> Thanks. Keep the chatting from after you've set the table. You will get cold. I, I apologize, madam. She apologizes like a small frightened animal. But we get to the serving cart and made a jarring racket as she dropped several teaspoons. The comments made Nazi's expression even harsher. May Shannon in turn quail even more. It's alright, love to be nice, what does a single greeting matter? I've already been made to wait for so long, so you must be quite cold anyway. <laughs> it's alright. It's not cold yet. It's cold. Devin, is setting the table quickly. Hey. I'm sorry, madam. It was obvious that he was getting irritated. The ineptitude that, that delayed the tea, the clumsiness of the servant, everything points to the incompetence of Nazi's everyday guidance, making her lose face. As the person in charge of matters of the Ashermia head house, allowing that clumsiness to be exposed today of all days was truly nothing less than total humiliation. Lay off, Nazi Hime Song. I don't you think it's a little harsh to bully Shannon Chan when she's trying her best? Not bullying anyone. A nice smell. May I ask you the brand of this tea? Um, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I'll find out for you later. Kyrie tried to be nice to her, wanting to cut through the tense mood. However, instead, Shan had shown a disgraceful display, darkening Nazi's face in the room's mood. By that point, Ava's eagles were loud enough to be heard by everything in the room. <laughs> what is this? Devon Shan, do you even don't you even know what you're pouring up? Come now, you mustn't serve something so suspicious to guess. <laughs> we'll need a silver spoon at the very least before we can drink this. I... I'm sorry. I'll go get one immediately. Shannon Chan. You know what silver spoons are you for? Or why they have to be silver? Do you know why? No. Um. Ava's eyes played over Shannon, who was setting the table and a catty smile flew onto her face. Taking on its own, the expression on Ava's face may have been charming in an impish sort of way. However, the words being spun from her lips held within them the, 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 the keenness of a razor. Shannon tried with all of her might to avoid Ava's gaze. Need to focus on her. Grasping that Shannon was hard pressed for an answer, Rosa promptly gave some timely help. They say that silver dims if it's touched by poison. <laughs> Learn something right. Learn something. Right, Shannon John? He was being treated as undrinkable unless it could be first be tested. Poison. Nazi's eyes as well as insulted both the tea and herself for serving. But Rudolph then flippantly patted, patted Ava on the shoulder. Patting Ava on the shoulder. <laughs> you don't need any silver cutlery. With just one lick of your poisonous talk, even a silver plate would go pitch black. Why? Ah, 
<laughs> I get to hear that poison tongue every day, so I must be poison proof by now. Emma, I don't mind you doing it to me, but you gotta tone it down a smidge for the poor souls without resistance. <laughs> My, how cruel. I knew you should have shown up with information about Timmy, didn't I? <laughs> I recall the lead set by Hideyoshi is horse laugh and smile, though sour. There I made a single exception to this, and nothing else. But even so, for the time being, Conversations at the parlor could have been mistaken for a lively and friendly chat. As Shannon finally finished setting the tea table and made it to leave, Kiri apologized to her in a low voice for not being able to help. Shannon gave a light bow and made a hasty retreat. Shannon cast her eyes downward, pushing the cart down the corridor. The pitiful air around her made it obvious that she had borne the brunt of some bullying. Don't be sad. You didn't do anything wrong, Nason. You were watching. That is my duty. <sighs> Madam and Ava's son can go to hell. But the even worse coward is that guy. Cannon glared hatefully in the opposite direction of the parlor. Everything for the tea had been delayed by a little bit of trouble in the kitchen. Trouble had not been Shannon's fault. The truth is it had been Goda's mistake. In the first place, there was no way that a show-off like Goda would ever hand off a hand off over a flamboyant job like carting tea to the guests. He had needed to make the tea all over again, which made him late. Realizing that he wouldn't be earning any brownie points, he had pushed the, ta the task of setting the table on Shannon, who happened to be passing by. One could truthfully call it being shrewd, and one could unquestionably call it cowardice. It's all right, Kevin and Kun. Thank you. I really don't mind. Canon's silence vividly showed that Shannon's words were coming from her heart. Thank you. Even if you're the only one who understands, I still feel a bit better, I think. You bottle things up too much, Nesson. Nice, huh? You should be less hard on yourself for once. Suddenly they both felt someone's presence and whirled around. An elderly man stood there. It was Genji, the head servant. What are you doing? Shannon, hurry back to the kitchen. Yes. If you'll excuse me. <sighs> Ken humbly obeyed and promptly made the push made me to push the cart and leave. However, Ken appeared to appeal to Genji in silence something in his eyes that he cannot express in words. What is it? Did something happen? Sh Shannon didn't do anything wrong. But those... A bit cannon come. <clears throat> You'll excuse me. Return to work immediately. Cannon come. You too. Go back to your post. Peace. Say so, if there is anything, if there is nothing, then go. Yes. If you'll excuse me. What's going on? Charlie, by the way, you're muted. Dad was like, what? <laughs> Confirms that Kuma Sao is my favorite character now. <laughs> I am <laughs> wide and ready to do some old lady. I was also gonna say, hey, uh, for convenience, <laughs> Thanks, uh, Josh, can you put uh, Canon Dab in episode one? Kuma Dab episode one. Uh, you mean like the edit? Uh, just like the, the gift. Oh, yeah, let me find the gift real quick. Wait, are we calling it here? No, 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 no. I just wanted to, to put post-canon dab so that someone else can see. 
<laughs> By the way, uh, how long are these chapters, like, in between? Uh, so, like, so normally these chapters are maybe, like, an hour long piece, but for the fucking questions, are some of them are really long. Uh, yeah, Wait, we're, like, are we, are we just the... going until 1 o'clock now? Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we, I mean, it kind of depends. Do people want to keep going, or do, you want, do we want to stop at the Kumasawa monologues? I want to I wanna leave it in suspense until tomorrow, because I'm evil. All right, fine. Oh, I think My throat was... is actually starting yeah. to hurt worse. That's, that's fair. All right. Yeah, we should probably I think talk. three hours is a good time. Don't good forget the to stay for range. Of course, I'm not stupid. Like don't, don't forget to tie a towel. All right. So, uh, Take your saves. One thing to point out, uh, Cannon calls uh, Shannon uh, Nason. Mm -hmm. Almost Perfect. like their brother and sister. Are they related? One thing I did see is, uh, actually... Hmm. If, if you have any uh, very distinct questions, you will post them in the fighting game. <laughs> and the, the, the pseudo-fighting game spoiler chat. Uh, here, I'm gonna have yeah. to fucking... I'm gonna have to fucking, uh, uh care, be careful with this, because it's gonna... If I leave now, it's going to fucking, uh, show my desktop, and I don't know what the fuck is gonna appear on there. <laughs> yeah? Wait, we post it in the channel under the COD Halo? Channel? What? No. The fight games channel? No, uh, no, 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 no. no. Uh, the Umineko fight game room slash. Control. Yeah, he was specifically talking to me. It's the combination. Oh, okay. By the way, the combination. Not to me. us. By the way, Robu, you got your <laughs> fucking request. I clipped the fucking me freaking the fuck out. Perfect. By the way, I want to I want to say this right now. I do apologize if I hurt anyone's ears. It's just like it's been a month's buildup of the bit, and yeah. then it finally a hit. A month? Just a month? A month no, of months. Months of buildup. Of Almost five months. months. So I will say, uh, right now, uh, since we're kind of wrapping up, uh, to the people who are new here, thank you very much for joining. Uh, as, you, as I'm sure you could kind of, kind of tell, this is part of my ongoing uh, resolve to make every single person I know read an echo. Uh, so, uh, hey, uh, sp spread, we're, we're spread the fact that we're doing this reading. Get people yep. into it. <laughs> you got some pretty good reading. Tell your friends, tell your parents, tell your children. Yeah. That's a pretty I, good reading. I, 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 I hate e shelling, uh, but the, the, that's just kind of the nature of this, because I kind of would like this to go a little bit somewhere. Beg harder. Mm -hmm. I, I will beg until Came I into the like void. To stop begging. Uh, but yeah. I hope all of you have enjoyed it thus far, especially the people in the audience who can't, who don't mm -hmm. really have roles. Uh, this has been really fun. I hope you all have a good night. Bye bye. Bye. I should probably shouldn't say that because it's not the fact of fucking Markiplier. Bye bye. <laughs> good night. <laughs>